Disney stock fell off a cliff. Rumor has it investors went out. Who got the remittance data early? I bet it's Goldman. Yeah, fuck you very much. Bye -bye. Jared, it's chaos down here. Where are we? And seas are wet for there were no more worlds to conquer. Shane? Shane? Well? Nobody's buying Disney stock anymore. Everybody wants monster movies. Monsters. They're now the most popular product on the street. That's good for us. Yes and no. I heard from somebody who heard from somebody. No, Alex. No. Sorry. Benny Klieger over at Morgan is taking out some heavy losses in the bond department. Your ship might be taking on water. It might be time to get a life jacket and get out. Holy shit. I'm jacked. Holy shit. I'm jacked! I'm jacked to the test! Good. Do you feel it? No. Well, that's extremely convenient for you. What'd you hear, Tony? It's happening. Everybody wants our swaps. Kathy's yeah. office is looking for you. Young people from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part, too. <laughs> They're doing their part. Are you? Join the mobile infantry and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. Can we please stop fighting? We're starting to hurt innocent perverts. I don't want to stop. And be sure to like and subscribe. Welcome back, everybody, to another Fan Rant Thursday here at Hold My Dual Shock, where we provide you guys with the speculations, rumors, and hard hitting facts of the fandom so we can rant and rave about it. Spreading nuance through the fandom. <laughs> Spreading nuance through the next generation. But yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget, if you see someone not engaging in nuance, report them. See something, say something. <laughs> This is so bad. Oh. oh my gosh. Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, so I'll do some shout outs real quick because I see some of you guys got here super early to put some comments. So I very much appreciate that. So what's up, Majin the Ruiner, Avengers Rising, South Cali Guy, Jim Stormcrow. Thank you for hanging out with us, bro. Brogu, um, Terrace. I hope. Parker, I hope I hit everybody this there. You got Avengers Rising, everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. A lot of uh, a lot of comments, guys. Jeez, thank you. Um, let's bang through some of these. You have to go back over there. Bro. Yeah, I know where I gotta go. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think this is what happens when we actually post these things ahead of time. People yeah. actually have time to comment beforehand. Yeah. I don't want to hear anything about how we should be more structured. So Maja Thurner said they definitely should make a new Matrix. The last one was trash. Matrix Four needs to be time wiped from existence. Yeah, but they're absolutely going to build off of four. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not like this is going to erase four. They're like, hey, we should do some more of that. No, 100%. So, like, I'm completely against this. I think The Matrix was great to begin with. And I think anything moving on forward from the fourth one is going to be awful. Yeah, we're going to talk about The Matrix more later, guys. Let's bang through some of these comments. Um the Ninja's Rising, how do you hold my dual shock? I saw you guys on Skywalker's stream last night. Yeah, Sky went to the premiere of Rebel Moon. And I'm exciting. so jealous that I wasn't there to at least be on my drink. Kitty was drinking. <laughs> and so Look if you wonder why she's Katie. sometimes not available, it's because of the bottle. Her alcohol consumption. Not really. I'm just <laughs> I was being social people. Yeah. Um, Let's uh, flick through these. So South Carolina guy said, hey, Hold My Dual Shock. It was great seeing you on Sky's stream last night. Just wanted to hear your thoughts on what Zack Snyder had said in regards to Sky's question. Ready to go. Yeah, so, well, I don't want to say too much because that's Sky's thing, and he worked really hard. It was really, really cool. Uh, we were lucky enough to be a part of that. He invited us to be part of the panel. That was a lot of fun. And let's just say it's really good stuff. We might have some guests on later. We don't know. It, it was kind of last minute of us, you know, getting our shit together and inviting people. So um, hopefully this will be a conversation we'll have when other people yeah. are on the stream with us in like an hour or so. But right off the bat, I mean, I think it, it fuels what we all have been saying that it is inevitable. There's no business reason not to do this. And as more things are going wrong with Warner Brothers, I think that they're not going to have a choice. 
I think it's not going to be in their hands, guys. I think between the sell of Warner Brothers Discovery and the fact that like the entire superhero genre is down right now, and the only thing that seems to be holding up is this like movement to sell the Snyder verse. Yes. And also to support Zack Snyder. Yeah. Jim Stormcrow said a female silver surfer, fine, but she wasn't the herald that the Fantastic Four had their first encounter with. Yet again, the MCU compresses the comic story to get to the bit they want to play with. Which, thank you so much for that. I love that comment. Um, because it's not even as if we're just bashing on the fact that the Silver Surfer is a female. It's the point that it makes no sense to start with a female Silver Surfer. I have, I can't express how little problem I have with it being a woman. What I have a problem with is that it's more of what we've come to expect from Disney. Yeah. Um, if this was like them honestly doing it because it served a story, if there was a story from the comics that needed to be told where she was the female, mm -hmm. where it was a female Silver Surfer, that's one thing. But one, she was only in like four issues. She was the actual Silver Surfer's love interest. She was gifted her powers by Galactus. And as I'm saying this, I'm sure you guys are hearing some alarm bells going off that Disney will not have her be someone's love interest because, God forbid... She can't be gifted her powers because that might insinuate that she didn't earn them. Uh, <laughs> and so that's not a story that's going to be told. And it robs us of the actual tragic story of the Silver Surfer. And Because she yeah. also dies at the end of the comic. So she's not even the Silver Surfer Ooh, that long. Spoiler, because you know that people are going to be wrangling down those four issues. And now you just made that redundant. Like... It was now, in the article. Like, now there's no reason to go read the four issues. <coughs> she dies. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. But again, <laughs> like that's great comic by Jim Sorko. It's a different continuity, by the way. It's not even this. I mean, and that's what they do. They pick and choose. Um, more stuff came to light. Kevin Feige admitting that he's really not that into comics. Not that I think you have to be into comics to be great at making a comic book adaptation. Um, but it would be nice, wouldn't it? It would be nice to know. <laughs> it would be nice. Hello, Brogu. Masha Werner said, for democracy, dem for democracy, for freedom, for liberty, Helldivers 2. Dude, I still have to play that game. Yeah, dude. Uh, ever since Helldivers came out, the meme sites that we're on have become ex like exceedingly based. <laughs> and uh, it's almost like there's more interest in that form of government than there is in like the actual you're talking about yes. the helldivers government yeah. Dude, yeah. <laughs> you just see dudes being like dude i'll just express some democracy Dude, like oh like, my god the whole thing is like what are you gonna do this for it's like for super earth i care more about super earth than this earth it's uh it's funny it, it's it's a contradiction so start that one because we'll get back to that when we start talking about yeah, 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 gotcha. um, so you need to start oh, gotcha. here otherwise you won't Bro, star. Star. Dude, there's a freaking star, star I'm there, my I'm guy. Hearing, you know, We're sorry. so sorry, guys. This is. I apologize. As you guys know, I'm the bully on the channel. So I'm having to berate Peter live. <laughs> Parker said, sadly, I'm not interested in Rebel Moon anymore because part one disappointed me, which is understandable, Parker. But... Yeah, I mean, don't pretend to be into it if you're not. I will say, we still have the extended cut to come out. Um, not that that will mean it's for everybody, but. I mean, there is a pattern with a lot of people who said they didn't like the Justice League really enjoying Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yes, 100%. And also, Parker, there's another one. So give it a chance. Maybe the second part will wrap it all up and just make the first one make sense for you. Maybe not, but, but we can always be hopeful. Parker said, not every franchise canon needs to, uh, needs to keep intact if the franchise has too many bad sequels. Very true. That is Hundred percent true. Now Disney does not believe that because they've doubled down on sequels and prequels for the entire year. Jim Stormcrow said, "I'd like to see Snyder's Rebel Moon rather than Netflix." Yep. So that's coming soon, my dude. It's so what this summer at the same time that the second part comes out, you get the extended cut. I almost think of the first Rebel do Rebel Moon as like a teaser. Yeah. Because I'm very much like with everything really. It's the director's cut that I'm interested in, whether it's like Blade Runner or Lord of the Rings. Just all of them, yeah. you know. Um, and so, yeah, you have the commercialized version, but that's always going to be a compromise. So I'm much more interested in see the full Zack Snyder cut. Brogu said, I wish I was there to see you guys last night. I went back on the replay and saw that my heavy metal buddy, El Necron, was there. 
very cool guy. That was the first time we met him. Mm -hmm. Um, they got like such a, a cool group of guys. We we're lucky to have uh, been introduced to them by you guys. I'm sad I wasn't there, you guys. I'm feeling like FOMO right now. Yeah, you should. You uh, should. Strong. If it wasn't for South Cali guy, we'd still just be uh, three <laughs> wandering spirits, you know, adrift. Watching the Runer said, I'm cool on Silver Surfer. Think I'm not going to watch it. I'm cool on Marvel for right now, except X Men 97. I haven't gotten to X Men 97 yet. I've heard very good things. So have I. I feel like people are going back and forth though in some of the articles recently about which episodes they like the most and mm -hmm. the direction it's going. So people are talking about it. That's gonna be well, <laughs> well, no, I'm saying like so you've seen like an overwhelming like and initially people were like they love it so much and he had 100 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, you said that. It's like I've seen people talking about which episodes they well, like saying, more. <laughs> it's like oh wow. I'm saying so okay, you read no, because about this too. I'm saying a lot of people were saying they loved it overwhelmingly and that uh -huh. it's completely mm -hmm. like it was before. Mm -hmm. And then there's other people like, well, no, they have major issues with certain aspects of the show and the different choices that they've made. So mixed opinions. <laughs> I fucking hate you guys. Okay. <laughs> I was like, Fuck thank you. Andy. you. Okay. <laughs> if you guys want Katie to break down any other terms in her, it's like, uh, my name Forget is Ron, it. Long Thoughts. Forget oh, yeah. <laughs> She's Gosh. Dandy. Yeah. I hate you guys. Tara said, don't mind me. I'm just chilling with my 24 pack of the sponsor of this channel. Red, I almost said Red Bull. <laughs> don't, don't play with my That would be man. wrong. Monster, send the check. And you guys, you would also know that Terrace has a huge pack of Monster at his house if you were on the Discord. So join the Discord. Yeah, because if you want to know who we're robbing to get that. <laughs> like, how are you going to be part of the heist if you're not part of the Discord? Exactly. Yeah. Bro. Post at your own peril. <laughs> like if you put a bag of monster, like yeah, yeah, yeah. open season. Yeah, you're asking. <sighs> Bro, who said me too? Terrace House guy. I drank so many, I'm starting to get a headache. <laughs> I was literally just talking about how we're encouraging people to have a caffeine addiction. So That's, I apologize. See, and that's how I know you guys aren't drinking enough because I used to get headaches. <laughs> yeah, what's your And then you go know, headaches, nosebleeds, and then it just stops. Now I don't bleed at all. I, I, <laughs> my I cut myself. Dry. Just, yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, Tara said, yeah, two is my max, LOL. I had to like down for a bit. Rookie numbers. Those are rookie numbers. You got to pump those numbers up, maybe five or six. Come on, man, Terrace. <laughs> Parker said, will Alien Romulus be an anthology standalone story since it's set between Alien and Aliens and not having to tie into the rest of the franchise? Like, I don't want to see stupid David and the Engineers. That's a good question. <sighs> let's, let's start unpacking some of these because that's a that's a good question. Ah, it's, it's a... <sighs> I love Alien, but I actually like Prometheus, and I even liked Alien Covenant. Yeah. But I totally understand that that's probably because I love sci-fi so much that I am willing to, like, drink deeper from the cup and, like, overlook some of the problems. Now, that's not to say it doesn't mess up. It just <laughs> makes the whole thing so freaking messy. Um and then also for everything that they raised as ideas between Prometheus and Covenant, they just also didn't answer. Um, so I don't know how much that was. I'm not getting the third film that they thought mm -hmm. they were going to get. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I don't. I would hope it wouldn't. I, I hope they realize that they've made some mistakes and that it doesn't really. Does, continu does continuity, continuity matter with Alien when you have like Alien crossover pre like and Predator, Predator crossovers? Or do we think it's like half of it matters and the other half is kind of like B movie fun? Like, because I don't, when people talk about Alien, I don't think of any of the crossovers. I think of like the once is Sigourney Weaver. Um, when I went into Prometheus, I went in there with questions and I honestly left with more questions, but my love for sci fi kind of allows me to look past that and be like, no, what? I still enjoy the film. Problem with uh, Prometheus as well is you have this introduction to the engineers, which is it, it actually oh. raises too many questions. Parker said there's more to it. He oh, said shit. showing oh. up doing science mumbo jumbo monologues and over explaining the xenomorphs instead of keeping their mystery and not engineered bioweapons made yesterday instead of being natural aliens that exist. Yeah. Gotcha. Sorry. Parker. And that's kind of what I had hoped to see at an alien covenant was not that they were truly engineered. I was hoping that the story was going to be the engineers stumbled along the aliens. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and okay. that the black goo and all this was essentially how they reproduce. And instead of, like, pre-egg, they have, like, this larva in the mm -hmm. black stuff. 
Yeah. And that's what I was kind of hoping for, that essentially as formidable as engineers were and as intelligent as they are, it was kind of like a, a parable of sometimes intelligence doesn't, you know, defeat just raw power, like evolutionary fury, like, you know, ferociousness and that the aliens are just too savage and mm -hmm. that there was really no answer to it. And I had hoped that the alien, you saw the, uh, they call it something different, like the Ulta alien, I don't yeah. know, yeah. the pre-alien, that yeah. the, the end of Prometheus, that was like a, a hybrid one-off, mm -hmm. kind of like you saw in like the later alien films where there's the hybrids and that wasn't going to be, no, 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 that's where the aliens come from. And okay. so that was disappointing, you know? I would say Majin the Runner says, I want Prometheus, Predator, aliens all mixed in together and give me a show. You just want a clusterfuck. <laughs> It doesn't mean it won't be entertaining, but I mean, that's some of that, you know, Godzilla X Kong was, stuff, you know? That literally, I was gonna say, that's literally yeah. Godzilla and Kong, the new Empire type of stuff, where you just throw all of them together and see what fucking happens. Yeah. Tara said, I loved, man, I loved Prometheus so much, even with his flaws, but the sequel fucked it so hard. So Parker says, Alien Resurrection also explored trying to control the vicious aliens, but not going well, obviously. Yeah, Which I feel like is impossible. Tara said, I was somewhat hoping for a lead into something Eldritch like for the Prometheus sequel as the source god, if you will. Fassbender carry that film hard. Now, that was like, Fassbender is my favorite part of that. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I was hoping for. And that's what I mean by like, they introduced the ancient years and it raises like this almost like Lovecraftian idea of like the old gods. And the aesthetic when they come across the tomb or the uh, spaceship in Prometheus, I felt was like fucking on point. It was like hit that whole idea of like, oh man, here are these old gods that have been pulling the strings, you know, we're but like a glimmer in their eye type thing. Yeah. And then they're like, no. And then also <laughs> and then like, the no. fact that in Covenant, <laughs> it's ambiguous whether or not David wipes out the engineers or if that was another offset because they don't look oh, like yeah. the freaking engineers. Oh, shit. They yeah, look like like another variant and it's like dude so we're just like i said you go yeah. on their questions and you leave with more questions <laughs> but there are questions that only people who are invested enough to pay attention would yeah. ever i mean you get that from watching all the videos on youtube i feel like there's more content more definitive content from people on youtube breaking it down than there was in the actual like movie alien covenant but what do you think because it's in between both movies, it's going to be like a 1.5 or do you That's think? That's what people are saying. It's like a yeah. 1.5. Oh, that's weird. You know what it's called? It's called a cash grab. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not a sequel. It's not a prequel. It's a way to make money. No, I don't know. I don't know. What can you do if it's between the two of them? Like what can you That's what really... I don't know. Where do you go with that? Because um, the story somewhat have to link up between the two films. Like They, they don't have, have to. to. They could. They could. But I feel like... When you do a 1.5, you're basically saying, like, hey, these are linked. Well, no one's called it that. I mean, the, the worst case scenario that it's an attempt to, like, a soft reboot. Mm -hmm. that, that would probably be, and people would say, oh, it's not possible, dude. I they think, do it all the goddamn time. I, 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 there's no no shillery, and there's no creative bankruptcy that would surprise me anymore. Yeah. What's up, Sean Franklin? Brogo said, Aliens is my favorite. I loved when Vasquez put Vasquez said let's rock sorry i tried to slur that all together mm, why don't you hear that let's rock a little more <clears throat> why don't you hit that peter let's rock that's so cringe <laughs> well parker said pitch black needs a proper sequel uh -oh. Pitch you didn't like uh Chronicles of riddick dude yeah i actually like that i like so, that again so that yeah. chronicles of riddick a great litmus test for how much you're willing to explore ideas versus needing great execution i liked chronicles well you like it because it's an action film i you have no interest on the broader sci-fi that's very true i enjoyed it I think it like <laughs> but i also am not discerning so like i find the actual of like the lore of it interesting of like the like Furians and, 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 and the people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the world building they did in that actually was pretty good and they kind of gloss over like oh it's been diesel films like, nah, it's actually his best film but <laughs> by a long shot Tara's asking, I said, they never deal with the space jockey from Alien. They retconned it, I I think. Do you know what he's talking about? The uh, freaking, I don't know. I'm <laughs> no blanking now. I'm going to say I'm blanking on that. 
Parker said continuity definitely doesn't matter between because Alien vs. Predator 1 has Lance Harkinson Bishop, even though he shouldn't be born yet. That blatantly says Henriksen. Henriksen. Like, he's just like Harkinson. 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 I, it's because I'm so used to saying Harkinson. I rewatched so, um, that's why. Dumb and Dumber last night and watching <laughs> Jim Carrey working through the newspaper. That's what it feels like sometimes. You're like, hard. I knew it was going to be a reference be like, to well, me. That's a, that's a big one. So that, <sighs> that's, that's Henderson. That's H-E, not H-R. That's H-E-N, not H-A-R. Rude. Yeah. Terrence Housley said, I know a lot of people that only got into the Alien franchise with Prometheus and then abandoned it with the follow-up, sadly. What's up, Daniel Martin? Great to have you in the chat. Um, hit that Sean Franklin. Sean Franklin said, have you played the Matrix Path of Neo and Enter the Matrix? Yes, we did. Yeah. Um, How was that? I love Enter the Matrix. Enter the Matrix is cool. Well, when Andy and I bought it, we were like, why the fuck do you not play as Neo? We were, oh, we so, were like, we were we young. Can't play we were, Neo? No, because you're playing as Naomi. Because and, by that, it comes, it takes place after two, right? Between yeah. two, and two and three. And so you'd be completely broken if you could just be Neo flying around, a, you know, fucking yeah. shit up. But Path um, of Neo, that shit was hard, too. Yeah, you were what ghost and Naomi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, the, the Asian dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. It was, it was fun. It um, hardest one, hardest mission because they were still structured as missions. Yeah, was you had to shoot a plane mm -hmm. wheel as it was taking yes. off. Yes. And again, Peter and I being like little bitties had no fucking court. We were still we were like so we were still incapable. We were playing games that we were too young to be playing, and we were uh, weren't good at using the analog. And we were just fucking useless. And yeah. We were so angry. Also, Sean, did you play the Unreal Engine uh, Matrix game? Like the kind of demo they released? Where I you can't play it if it's a demo. Not no, it. it's what you play. <laughs> you download it instead of that. But it's, it was Sean, I'm like, sorry. I'm just being such a bitch today. <laughs> but no, it's, You're it's, just being on a fucking uh, roll. I'm gonna, which I'm gonna, I don't care what I'm really going to hit this. Terry's house, I said, someone say Jim Carrey. Say something, Andy. Come on. I was reminded. No, I'm not going <laughs> to. Don't you fucking dare. Oh my gosh. Okay, Dale Martin said, are you guys stoked about the idea of another Matrix movie? Would you do a prequel and explore the pre-Neo Matrix? Okay, so am I excited about another Matrix movie? No, because they're 100% going to build off of the last one, which I think sucked. Um, If I had to pick, I'd rather a prequel. I'd like to see the, the handover from Neo to Morpheus from the story where Neo picked Morpheus and the other like uh you know apostles or whatever I'm, I'm blanking on the word but okay. the the people that would reform Zion mm -hmm. oh okay okay because okay. that was the cycle like <clears throat> yeah. each time the the one would have you know be defeated or accept his fate you know as a part of the matrix and as part fate. of the program and then in order to keep this like glimmer of hope as a system of control he goes and he selects a handful I can't remember was it 17 or 12 I can't yeah, remember it was a, I know. of uh people to wait for the next one to come got you and that would be cool and that's morpheus mm -hmm. and some of the others and so i would be very interested in seeing that but the problem with it is so and people are forgetting how much flack the matrix trilogy got and i think it was because there were people who saw the first matrix film thought wow cool action and then there are people me it's like oh dude this is just like existential sci-fi Mm -hmm. And those two of us who are like, wow, existential sci-fi, um, we're just like down deep for the fucking war. And each one builds on a new narrative. And so you go from this idea of the chosen one to the subversion of a chosen one, that there is no choice. Yeah. And then you end up with, no, it's a story of self-determination with like it obviously ending with the line where Agent Smith says, why do you keep going? And he goes, because I choose to. Mm. And it's actually very similar to the theme of uh, Blade Runner 2049. After you oh, have told okay, that okay. full arc, and again, The Matrix wasn't really a franchise. It was a three-part story yes. yeah, of self-realization. Mm -hmm. um, the fourth one <laughs> has to abandon all of that. Yeah. And so <laughs> what is the message of the fourth one? Anyone Trinity is also one. the one. Yeah. Anyone can be one. Yeah. And it's. Which makes it all cheap. Well, it's not that it makes it cheap. cheap. It they just, didn't even care enough to make it make yeah. sense. Like, I'm saying to me, it makes it feel cheap. 
because yeah. I felt like they just wanted to make sure to be also important. So the Wachowskis and all, have been realize, through some shit. Well, and, you realize that one was only one of the Wachowskis. The other one didn't wasn't involved at all. So I don't know. Again, it's something that like I guess Peter and I look up to because again, those are the movies that we were too young to watch that we had to like. Mm -hmm. sneak and see at like friends houses because you know we were like little kids and they were just coming <laughs> out and so you always like remember those fondly but between that v for vendetta mm -hmm. like they made some of the like coolest most intelligent movies mm -hmm. yeah and then came sense eight and i actually liked sense eight because a friend recommended it but by that point, you see that the Wachowskis, even from between Sense8 Season 1 and Season 2, the abandoning of telling this cool story about intermingled, almost like a, re, like a reincarnation or like a shared soul type thing, mm -hmm. which is like cool mystic mysticism and sci-fi, and really just diving down into, they had a couple you know buttons they wanted to press and levers they wanted to pull. And so Season 2 kind of just ends abruptly in an orgy. Yeah, it, was, it and, made no sense. Well, it is, if you understand what they're trying to do. But they abandoned the storytelling. Well, yeah, I'm saying it made no sense because they didn't finish the fucking story that they took you on this wild yeah. ride. <laughs> so in season, or sorry, when Matrix 4 came out, and you see that a decent number of the cast of Sense8 is in the Matrix 4, I'm like, oh. <laughs> so the sense. Matrix yeah. 4 is more like a spiritual successor to like what they were trying to do in Sense8. Um, because they could have made the stuff with Trinity being the one make sense. Yeah. They could have said that when they brought Neo back, that in the process of him being mangled and her being mangled, that it messed up their source code, whatever mumbo jumbo you want. Yeah. And they, but no, they couldn't do that. It had to be that essentially the prophecy was never right without her, which makes no fucking sense because she was told she'd fall in love with the, the one. one. Also, he you broke know? the prophecy whenever he saved her in the second film. And it's like, well, he... Because the architect was like, you have to... It, it didn't moments. break the prophecy. He broke the cycle. Yeah. Because it was always a choice whether or not he would love humanity. And in <clears throat> his case, he loved a single person. Mm -hmm. um, but it was the same thing. It was like that X factor. Um, on a separate note, my, one of my favorite theories I heard recently is that the Merovingian is the original one. I do you remember you yeah. about that? Yeah. That one. So now, could you imagine if they did a prequel story or like a story just about the Merovingian? Well, that's what I'm saying. If they yeah. had the Merovingian be the one to select, yeah. you know, uh, all these characters, all the uh, like the, the chosen ones, or yeah, whatever, the disciples, the disciples, and then show his descent when he loses his body yep. into being the Merovingian and forgetting himself. And so essentially, it ends with you know the mayor of Vingian in his room, and you're like, oh shit, stop! It's stop, like stop. an origin story. You already had me. The mayor of Vingian could have been the original one. Like you yeah. sold me, sir. That was like, some, I can't, I you, sold me. you sold, but that's yeah. that it wasn't my idea. It was somebody who put a really cool uh, matrix thing together. I'll see if I can find it and put it in the bio. What's up, Karma Andrew? Whoops, I had the wrong one. Yes. Nope. No, I did not. Sorry. There we go. Carl Andrew said, man, I think I heard the producer of one of the people who was in the production in Amazing Spider-Man. Thank you. When they were making it, they said they wanted their movie not to be connected. Did not know that. Shocking. Brogu, I didn't care for Matrix Resurrection. Who's with me? They didn't even have Morpheus in the movie. Which they are now saying that they haven't released anything about the plot for the movie. And they said they didn't know if any of the original cast members would be returning. And literally named everybody. So <laughs> like, can't get I heard that. Because yeah. he's been the Witcher. Like, he's too busy. I heard that Keanu is not in it. But then I also heard people speculating that he might be in it. And that this is part of him getting Constantine too. Ooh! Yeah. Like a Paggy Steel? Yeah, like, Bro, okay. sign on for this, like, you know. I'm down for that. If I get Constantine too because of that, I'll, I'll take it. Explain why you like Constantine. Because <laughs> <laughs> Keanu Reeves might like his stuff. So there is one part in the major resurrection that Indy and I talked about in depth, which we thought was very silly, was the part with Morpheus when he's going to Neo and Trinity's body, and there's a little gap, and he jumps over it. But he's at this point this little beast that can yeah. basically levitate, and we're like, 
why is he jumping? It was like, this is a level of detail they did not put into this. Which, movie. yeah, which in the original trilogy, they, they never would have fucked that up. Exactly. And so he's already a program. He's one of these AI machines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Peter said. And he can be beads and fly. But he's jumping. And it just shows <laughs> you that. Stupid. Yeah. Also, from a personal standpoint, there was too much John Wick in the fighting. Yeah. You could tell that they were like, wow, John Wick's really popular. Because Connor was fighting like here. John Wick and mm-hmm. not like Neo. Yeah. And that doesn't make sense for his character yeah. because Neo's training comes from his, like, you know, having been uploaded all these programs on fighting. Okay. Sure, sure. We say then he doesn't have that because he's been rebooted. Then why would he fight like a trained assassin? You know what I'm saying? Like, John Wick's not fighting. That's not like a, a normal yeah. guy. That's the Baba Yaga. And also, it'd be cool. Like, they could explain that very well. Is say if when he's fighting, he has no memories of his past martial arts. Yeah. But as he's fighting, like, the source code's being broken, he's starting to remember he's getting better at fighting and he becomes the one again, like he's meant to be. Like, Everyone just wants to be John Wick. Exactly. Everyone wants to be John Wick. But we also got. Thank you so much, Brogu. Thank you for the super chat of four ninety nine. Thank you very much. Brogu said, Katie, Peter, and Andy, thank you for being such wonderful people and providing such a wonderful channel. You are the best. Can't have it. We're not wonderful. We're rage farmers, man. I won't stand for the slander. Because eventually, you know, people are going to be coming and thinking that we're like... Uh, Just... Mm-hmm. I said I wasn't going to get angry, and I'm not angry. Okay. Hello. You better grow eyes in the back of your fucking head, you horned piece of shit, because I'm not going to sleep until worms are crawling up your foam rubber ass. I'm going on safari, motherfucker. Safari. Ah! Gee whiz. What a day. So don't call us nice. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Thank you so much, Rogan. You lost where I was. Sorry, man. My bad, my bad, my bad. Park, just grab any of them. Like, yeah. just pick, yeah. There it's Parker, go. thank you. Parker, wasn't Pitch Black implied to be a Aliens Avatar universe with future Earth, whereas Chronicles of Riddick feels like an alien galaxy, thus the two films feel like they aren't canon to each other? Uh, dude, I don't think it's implied. I actually think that it wasn't in the graphic novel. It's like, it, I don't know if it's Aliens. It's confirmed that it's linked to something. Yeah. Look it up on your computer, yeah, like, well, so you don't mess up your computer. Sure. But there's, like, uh, I don't know what Parker's are. right. There's... Like, there's a definitive crossover. It wasn't a, like, maybe. And it might have been even Riddick fighting an alien or something. It, or yeah, Predator. I mean, it's 100%, I'm pretty sure, fighting an alien. Yeah, so it's not like, so it's yeah, it's perfect. like, it's like a, it's like a canon thing. Or as much as, you know. Yeah. Dude, back then, you could just make crossover comics. And I think that people who've read comics for a long time, read, like, uh, graphic novels for a long time, just understand that. There's like a wackiness to uh <laughs> Yeah, Parker, I think it's only a like continuation because you still have Vin Diesel there. <laughs> like yeah. the character is just the same. Yeah. He is definitely in like a completely different world. Yep, yep. So Carmen Andrew said this one? No, where are we going? Yeah, there. Um, I'm the only one that wished Andrew The Amazing Spider Man. Oh, the main <laughs> spy was the main Spidey and wish the Amazing Spider-Man movies wasn't rushed and succeeded. Hmm. He might be the other one, my guy. No, I'm joking. Um, I like you the are first. So of, yeah. Today, fuck. I didn't get enough energy drinks. No. Um. I like Andrew Garfield's one more than I like Andrew Holland's. Tom. Tom Holland's. <laughs> See, can't even learn his name. Can't be that good of a Spider-Man if I can't oh learn his name. Oh my gosh. No. Okay. Um. I think what hurt the. Andrew Garfield one is in the second film. Some of the choices, like I didn't like Dane DeHaan. No. And the Green Goblin Goblin looked like a guy who got like sprayed with like Agent Orange or something. You know? <laughs> he didn't. I don't know what they're going for. Um, I don't know why they fucked up Jamie Foxx like that. Like, what was that? Yeah. Like he looked like he's on like a, a registry somewhere. It was creepy. Um I wasn't a fan of the out of nowhere Brooklyn accent that uh, Andrew Garfield threw in there. That was horrible. And I wasn't a big fan of the montage where I was singing that song by the Lumineers. Which yeah. I also think it was a little bit hard coming after Tobey Maguire. But story arc wise, with the ending on the death of Gwen Stacy, 
it's one of those movies that for me, like the last 15 minutes completely justified a third. Yes. Yeah. Just to see how it all came together. So I, I definitely wanted to see a third one. Um, and I think a third one following the death of Gwen Stacy would have been more entertaining than the Tom Holland. Fuck yeah. They tease it so well whenever he's going about, about to fight Rhino as well. And he's kind of having to accept like, I am Spider-Man. I have to still be Spider-Man, even though my like love has died. Yeah, even like, though I'm a, broken inside. Exactly. I'm like, that's a more compelling story than what we got. And probably another hot take, but I, I don't even think the Tom Holland Spider-Man really even have a story because the first one is about trying to collect Tony Stark stuff. Dude, all the time. So that's Holland not really about. Are gonna kill you. Yeah, well, that's not really a Spider-Man thing. That's just a let's have an excuse to link into the Avengers thing. Um, the <laughs> second one with Mysterio is again trying to get Tony Stark stuff, and the third one is them realizing, hey, I don't think we can milk. have it milk Tony. Stark death a third time so we have so to let's bring back the other two yeah. that doesn't scream to me that they had like a story no it seems like they didn't believe in tom holland <laughs> but, I, just, I think they just wanted tom holland in spider-man the avengers and they said well while we're at it let's shake some you know, <laughs> sick, well. you know shake some money loose yeah Majin said the game path of Neo is awesome. I love it when you get to beat up ants and all types of programs they should have went with the gigantic smith at the end of the movie it's funny as fuck Never play the game. Uh, Tara Tosca says, so Morpheus died in the comics post Matrix 3, which was a mistake, obviously. Whatever the hell they were trying in Matrix 4 was just such an insult. I got so de-invested from all my Matrix YouTube videos. What I don't understand as well is not only do they not bring back Lawrence Fisher and they didn't bring back Hugo Weaving, and they had the guy that's from Mindhunter yeah. playing a very yes. milquetoast version of him. And that's not his fault. It's just... I think it was the writing. No, I'm saying like you're following Hugo Weaving's yeah. Agent Smith. You're not going to be no is you know Go sinister. Ahead. How do you? Yeah. It just completely unfair to him. Um, <clears throat> the guy that they had, they had Black Manta playing this version. This and to be fair, that opening sequence when Morpheus was an agent and then turns into Morpheus could have been really fucking cool if it was a prequel to like Morpheus and you find out that. He had been a person who became an agent, then saw the one or saw and then changed back because that really would have fit into his fanaticism and his belief in the one. Okay. But then no, that just that wasn't a thing. It was just Nah. Also, Broder, thank you for reminding me. And be sure to like and subscribe. I love that. That's like my favorite one you've made. Struggle with this. Um, okay parker said andrew definitely needs to be sony spider-man or a new fourth peter actor because tom holland doesn't want to play peter forever and also having tom in both mcu and sony's yeah the sony universe or whatever would confuse casual and normies parker casual and normies he confused fucking dakota johnson too yeah thank you so much for that it'll confuse casual and normies um, it, no, it, it's completely, definitely confusing. But um, I know they're, I'm pretty sure they're picking Andrew uh, Garfield to be the Spider-Man in the new Secret Wars Avengers, which is coming up. Who, by the way, Sam Raimi said he would like to direct. Ooh. Yeah, which I think pissed off a lot of people because they're like, well, where's my Spider-Man 4? <laughs> and he's like, I'm not working on that right now. Um, but I don't know if... I'm almost positive they're still trying to make another Spider-Man movie with Tom Holland. They want at least one more. He's contractually obligated at Sony for four. So there you go. But apparently he doesn't want to be in anything that's... Just garbage. No, he doesn't want to be in a collective one. Oh. He wants to be in like a street level, just like a neighborhood, New York City Spider-Man. He doesn't want to be part of like them bringing back all three wow. of them. I don't know. Um, same with apparently Feige doesn't want to do... They both want to go more street level. Um, Sony obviously wants to bring them all back because they make, like, it uh, makes a lot of money. A <laughs> billion, dollars. billion dollars, yeah. Um, and I think uh, you have a better bet of making a ton of money if you have Toby Wire and Andrew Garfield there as well. And to be fair to Andrew uh, Tom Holland, he did say he doesn't want to be in one of these, essentially one of these pieces of shit, um, like villain stories. Yeah. So he doesn't want to show up in Craven. He doesn't want to show up in Madam Web. Which fair play, um, I wouldn't either. Like, just, like no thanks. No, just don't do it. 
Um, dude, dude, like, I think it'd be more confusing to have any type of continuity. I think you know, Spider-Man fans are used to there being a new Spider-Man every couple of years. Yeah, it'd be weird if they stuck with anything. It's so true. I mean, just in our life, we start off with Tobey Maguire and when Andrew Garfield, and then we're finishing with Tom Holland. It's like, dude, it's, we're just due for another one at this point. Well, not that they've made it confusing because they brought all of them back. So yeah. now fans who don't know the previous ones are like, oh, so it's just three Spider-Men. Sam Raimi, <laughs> like, you know that if he had creative control, he'd do a good job. But one, um, have you guys seen who they're like trying to hype us up for being in Secret Wars? It's like Bucky... Uh, Flor, uh, what's yes. Florence Hughes' character's name? Black Widow. Black Widow. The new Black Widow. <laughs> yeah, the, the um, new Black Widow. It's just a bunch of characters who probably couldn't hold up a, it's the fucking like a Disney plus the Thunderbolts. Yeah. They're trying to put the yeah. Thunderbolts together with the Spider-Man, um, Captain Marvel, if they bring her back, mm -hmm. um, some version of Doctor Strange, but I don't think it's going to be Cumberbatch. It's who? I don't it's know. the Asian dude. Wong. Wong. And then, mm -hmm. so it's like, I don't know. Who I really like in Three Body Problem. Oh, he's amazing. But that's the thing. But it just, it looks like a last But I mean, Avengers. you can be a good actor. It doesn't matter if there's no story there. And they box themselves into a corner. Like, there's just, there's not enough interest, I don't think. Hit the Cloud Atlas comment. Dale Martin said, Cloud Atlas from the Wachowskis is really wild. I remember liking it at the time, but I need to go back and see if I st it still holds up. I like the idea of these people existing in different time periods. So I actually just recently rewatched it with mom and I thought it was phenomenal. It yeah. still holds up so well. Man, so I really like Cloud Atlas. We actually went and got a bunch of our friends when it came out to go watch it together. Mm -hmm. um, it's like one of the first movies that you could tell Hollywood was turning because it's a deeply artistic movie. There's a lot going on in it and people were just outraged at what they called yellow face in it. Like, I, I seriously, no, yeah. nobody wanted to discuss it on the merits or the creativity and the fact that the whole point is these characters are reincarnated over and over. Now, ignore the fact that the Asian actresses is also technically in whiteface, mm -hmm. that they're all so and the, they're the same characters because it's supposed to be the echoes of the same story being told oh, over and over again. Um, no, no, no. It was just people wanting to be offended. And at worst, you, you could say maybe it's a clumsy attempt. Okay. But there is no offense intended. Also, it showed a great amount of stupidity from the media. Blackface is not an actor in makeup. Like, Blackface is a minstrel show. It's when a character has, like, offensive, big red lips, shoe polish on. So... For instance, when Dave Chappelle is pretending to be a white, a white dude, he's not in white face. He's just wearing makeup. You know, when Jimmy Kimmel was pretending to be Shaq, he wasn't in blackface. He was just dressed up as Shaq or whatever. Same with when uh, Jimmy Fallon pretended to be Chris Rock. He was being Chris Rock. It wasn't blackface. He was pretending to be a character. And it's just another term that's become completely weaponized for something that's been done forever. I mean, you don't hear people lose their mind that Olivier was a fellow. Like, oh, dude, tear down, turn down, man. Fucking was in blackface. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yes, Daniel Martin, Cloud Atlas still holds up. That shit's amazing. Cloud Atlas is one Tom Hanks role that is never really talked about in his filmography. I think that's why. I think it's because. There's an asterisk yeah. next to it. Yeah. Because some people will be like, it's wrong. Also, dude, the banger. They had M83 in the uh, yeah. trailer. And for about a year or two after that, every every trailer for or every ad, dude, there was like vacation ads playing outro by M83. So. I also feel like after that trailer came out, the next movie that big movie came out was Oblivion, and they had MA3 do the entire soundtrack for that. They're like, man, these guys are hot. We gotta give them our movie. All right. Terra Sound said they could do a story about the failed iterations of the Matrix, the perfect one with no faults where humans went insane, the hell one with the vampires, and where it was like, come on, man. That would be a cool like series, mm -hmm. like a six-part series. Yeah. Where they could have each episode be like a little exploration, Black Mirror style, into oh. 
oh, a different an anthology for each can one. You, oh my gosh, can you? That's a really good idea, Terrence. Can you imagine an anthology where they're hour long episodes and each episode seems like day to day life and you see the like seepage of reality into the matrix? So, in the one where it's too perfect, you see everything's perfect in the growing discomfort in the program realizing that no 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 people need a certain amount of unhappiness yes, yep. and seeing people just start dropping and just unplugging from the matrix mm -hmm. same with you know all the, the different yeah. Where was one that's yeah that sounds awesome yeah and you could you could be so crazy you could get a different director for every single one you actually should get a different director for every single one you could can you imagine if you had guillermo del toro make the vampires and werewolves one holy shit, dude that would be so like cool. and it's just like pan's labyrinth it's yep. just off the and then you wall. have, you know, just another like awesome director do the overly nice one. You know, that would be that would be a really fucking cool way to go about it. Dude, Martin Runner said the Matrix and Terminator was supposed to be together. I forgot the lady's name they stole it from, but you know she got paid last year. Really? I did not know that. Hollywood built on the backs of theft. Jim Stormcrow. Now we have Dune. Yeah. Yes, we do. Jim Stormcrow and I had a really cool conversation. Um, he was talking about, we were talking about kind of the feeling towards Kong and Godzilla. And, uh, you know, our review is just essentially, it is what it is. It's just, it's a popcorn film. It's 100% just trying to get to the coolest scene without letting story get in the way. It's like plot points. Um, but we're like, I think we like uh, what we're talking about was essentially that you have this hyper separated fan you know or audience experience where you have a movie like dune and people want movies like dune but they know that in between dune and kong versus godzilla most of them have the story of godzilla and kong like just no real story but they put on airs by throwing on a couple social issues and so people see through that and so you're getting chaff no matter what mm -hmm. and so it's like i'd rather just have dune and then have things that are just unapologetically ridiculous ridiculous yes. than a bunch of ridiculous things that are trying to be deep <laughs> okay yes that are, are pretending to be more than they are yeah because realistically yeah kong versus godzilla has no story but neither did the marvels it was no. just a series of plot points you know there's no overarching no it literally feels... even the cuts it was like how can we get to the next thing so yeah. they just would jump they thought the spark notes of like a fucking the movie. difference was people were trying to make the marvel seem important it's like it's just not dude if they had just said hey it's just filler yeah, just filler then people like yeah hmm. but don't try and have it be a sequel to five different programs pet brett said neil will be a human in the matrix designed to make old people happy but keep making these movies <laughs> Oh my gosh. It'll be like that. Um, isn't it that Black Mirror episode where they go into the program and they're like in the, the two women in this, like the eight? Oh, San Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's supposed to be like a digital afterlife. Yeah. It's yeah. like a retirement community. More like the US Calister episode where like he's a cheap from trapped in there. Yeah, where like there's like a malevolent yeah where he's yeah. actually like, yeah. like evil damn Martin said are we going to get keep getting keanu reeves with his john wick look like matrix resurrections i feel like if they ever do another constantine he'll have the same long and scruffy beard he just got a haircut so no he won't oh did he really yep like he doesn't have the beard or the hair anymore what he's got, got like short hair i gotta see this this man's cleaning it up <laughs> so no daniel martin he's gonna change his look for constantine if I love, that's even what he's going to do. I love John Wick, but let's talk about the fact that John Wick 2 takes up moments. Like, take, like picks up moments after John Wick 1, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe hours, you know? Yeah. And his hair is distinctly longer and in a, a different style. Because in the first one, it's kind of long. Mm -hmm. But in the, the second one, it's very long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, way past his, like... Almost like we over two years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And they just didn't bother to like trim it's like, it up. Dude, it's, it's such an easy fix too. It's like just it's like, trim it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's like your counter reads, you can just show up with whatever hair you have at the moment. Exactly. Foolish. Benjamin Ryan said, I'm glad I got to become part of your channel, Andy Kitty and Peter. After all, we always need more channels to open discussion like this one. Thanks, you, Avengers Thank Rising. So actually, let's go to this. He said, I'm not a Matrix fan. I'm a John Wick fan, and I've become a fan of the four movies starring Connor Reeves last year when there weren't any real movies out to see in theaters, and I was glad to see chapter four. 
Shocking. So have you given Matrix a chance of finish rising or do you just not like it because you don't think it's something you would enjoy? Also, I think we're completely glossing over Keanu Reeves' best like trilogy, which is Bill and Ted. Like everyone can like, talk great about Matrix and Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted is clearly like his magnum opus. Like he will never top how good that was. So many people I know still haven't seen the first John Wick film because they think it's just not going to be for them. They're like, I just don't think I'm going to resonate. I mean, our, our mom oh, didn't yeah. think she was going to like it. Yes. And the second you see the dog die, you're like, oh, fuck. You're like, whatever he's about to do. It's just It's fine. just a fun. Mostly, like, I love uh, The Matrix. So I'm like, I enjoy John Wick a lot. But The Matrix is... I don't know. They're not the same, but no, they are not the same. They're, I'm saying like two different sets of films. Yes. Obvi I'm okay. Fuck you. Uh, forget it. <sighs> Tara said a pitch black was right in between the era of fifth element at the start and the underworld films towards the end. What a great time. Love fifth element. Um, I think there are certain films that seem, I mean, Chronicles of Riddick and pitch black very much in the same style as like 300 you yes. know like just grungy dark and fucking just like, like edgy heavy shit. metal yeah sci-fi or well not sci-fi uh, but you know yeah i know what you mean <laughs> Parker said multiverses aren't required to do crossovers crossovers used to just happen well, yeah yeah and that's what i was kind of alluding to earlier is people who've read comics for a long time know that it, like you'll hear people say oh you know cro uh, multiverses are like necessary they're no they're not like they're just something that comics used to do when they'd run out of ideas um and they usually were in between like a reboot like you'd use like a multiverse to really just fuck shit up and have to have a reset um and now people are like oh it's just it's a crucial part of the storytelling of comic books like you can completely tell good stories about them yeah which okay let's get on to so we went over the matrix and you guys never even definitively said do you want an actual matrix movie i like want to see what happens yeah not because i think it's gonna be good no, but i, I can't talk be. about it until it comes out yeah. so that's my chance yeah we're not allowed to no okay. my mouth shut let's talk about the uh silver surfer stuff so. okay so everyone obviously saw the big news yesterday that Bob Iger beat Nelson Feltz in the proxy war. So he gets a whole nother year of leading the ship. And that, and he said their main focus now is just seeing who will be his replacement. But um, I think this statement is hilarious. So Bob Iger says that Disney's mission is to entertain and not send messages. And then in the same breath said in an interview with CNBC, that the entertainment giant said the company is focused on capturing broad, if diverse, audiences. First of all, what does broad, if diverse, mean? What? What's the end Like, why would you not say broad and diverse? Or just diverse audiences? Because wouldn't a diverse audience already be broad? And again... So, you already have it here. Okay. Yeah. Stop filling with it. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. I don't think, uh, I think this is, we talked about this yesterday, dude, that that's pretty much going to be the flip-flopping from Bob Iger for the next year is in one breath, trying to reinsure investors that he's not going to let DEI drag Disney in, like into like nothingness, but he can't ever say that they're not going to continue to hit those social agendas because that's where his bread is buttered. I mean, they were like, the whole thing was bailed out by, you know, BlackRock and Vanguard. Yeah. And those companies have openly said that that's what they want, that they... That they don't care that Disney loses money. They don't give a shit that you're going to break some eggs, make an omelet. That this isn't about entertainment. This is about changing the way people see the world. So, not shocking. Oh, thank you so much, Marjan the Ruiner, with the super chat. So, Martin says, Sophia Stewart, in interviews, she talks about how John Connor was Neo and he came back as a resurrection to save the humans. Let's make that movie. I didn't know that. Holy fuck. That's, yeah. So, the... Was that so? Was that what I was seeing like earlier this year about the lawsuit with the Matrix? I think that's what she said. Yeah. She got paid. Yeah, because yeah. it was like it was contentious. So they I mean, stole the story from her. I don't know. So, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot more to the Matrix than just that. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I mean, 
that is the beginning of it, the idea of like a resurrected character. Can you imagine if Keanu Reeves continued to play Neo, Neo and like became with, young John Connor? He kind yeah. of looks like the uh, kid who played John Connor in Terminator uh, Two, two yeah. Yeah, Judgment Day. Yeah, Judgment Day. <laughs> Dude, yeah, it's like a little little boy grew up into Keanu Reeves. That'd be funny as fuck. I would blow up. Well, thank you, Masha Gruner. Um, but yeah, so no, I just nothing's gonna change at Disney, you guys. Even more backed by the fact that they announced that the Silver Surfer is going to be a female. So, and literally everything slated for this year, none of it is original content. Yeah, there's half a dozen sequels or you know, three equals. Three equals. Um, there's a Mufasa prequel. Which there's a live action Moana. I'll say with the Mufasa prequel, by the way, guys. Um Sonic 3 comes out at the same time. So people are making bets about who will win <laughs> that war because they both come out December 20th. And a lot of people are hoping that you will support Sonic 3 and not Mufasa. <laughs> I I still am shocked that, one, I think John Favreau just fucked up with uh, The Lion King. Just not good. And people, like, lost their minds about it. But, dude, they look... You're talking about the live action? Yeah, the live yes. action. Um, oh. They cut out some of the most iconic parts. Oh, well, you have to clarify, Andy. Um, people are going to think you're talking no, about the original. No, well, did John Lion Favreau King. wasn't involved. With I know, that. but I'm I, saying. I was like, why do you need clarification? Um, the, the one for everybody who you know bashes on certain directors for like lack of color and trying to be hyper realistic, um, you realize, and we grew up in Africa, how sterile the plains can look, mm -hmm. and so there's almost no visual intrigue. Um, yeah, it looks like a real line, but lines don't emote. Which so is creepy. That was unnecessary and a huge step down from uh, when they did the Jungle Book, where I felt like they still were able to, you know, capture some of the emotion in the animals. Um, yeah, the animals still look like they magic. And again, it was the beginning of this crowd where they were cutting out songs like Hakuna Matata. It's like, what are you doing? And just through sheer nostalgia, it made an enormous amount of money. But I don't think people were happy with it. Or they, they're happy because they can't be disappointed because the nostalgia was so great. But I think if they wow. make a Mufasa prequel, I think it's just, they'll be going in there thinking, oh, what is it? The Lion King made almost $2 billion or something crazy. Yeah, something insane. And they'll be thinking that they're going to get a billion. I don't think it will. I think the yeah, live actions are burned out, I think. Well, no, I wasn't kidding. Like, there's literally articles coming out. Like, are they going to have another Barbenheimer? But this time, instead of people going to see both movies, one will win out. Oh, it's gonna be very much like Black Widow. You know how you know how Mufasa's story ends. The yeah. dude dies. Yeah, like, <laughs> so it's like I don't really know where shit it's going. About him. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't need to know his backstory. And it's also supposed to be a live action again. So it sounds creepy because Disney somehow has not figured out how to make live action animals that don't look creepy. We saw how it went with uh, Mermaid. Little Mermaid. Yeah, mm -hmm. they look dead eyed. God, I can still I can still. They never used to. Though. I know, but I'm saying, like, I don't know what's going on. Like, they got so busy asking if they could, they didn't ask if they should, you know. <laughs> the tint of the dark arts. What up, Integrity 101? What's up? He also hit us with the second part. It's like, yeah, the Zack Snyder reverse is inevitable. It is true. Sorry. Dude, you're scrolling all over. No, I'm trying to keep back where we were. My bad. There it is. Sorry about that. Then we get. Dude. I'm gonna blow your freaking mind here. Ah, uh, you're right. Doo -doo -doo. So, Parker, I don't want Tom Holland's link for the Zelda movie. Me neither, Parker. He doesn't I, deserve it. I also don't want Timothy Chalamet. I'm like, no. I like Timothy Chalamet, but every single fan casting has like him and like three other people. It's so unoriginal. Okay. He also, believe it or not, there's no actor who fits every single role. No, or every single type of movie. Um, but I also, off the top of my head, can't even think who I'd want to play Link. I think live action will be, isn't a great option. Well, amongst Peter's frantic scrolling, I saw somebody talk about a Studio Ghibli adaptation. There it is from, and I think that's the best case. I think having a Thank Studio you. Ghibli animated version is the best way to approach it. And also, you know, People forget why we don't have animated features anymore. It's not because they stopped being viable or they stopped being successful. It's because Disney actively tanked it with like Treasure Planet 
Oh, because yeah. they wanted it to move over to the much more cost effective um, CGI based stuff. Yeah, which looks like shit. Well, they didn't originally. Like, no, it they seems did, like they're just putting like, less um, effort in. When Toy Story came out, it was really, really cool. But then everything now, they don't even, like, and again, they don't have character design. All the characters look, look the same. Like the same three shapes. There's a character who's a circle, there's a character who's a triangle, there's a character who's a rectangle. That's. I mean, yeah, all the girls have the same face. Because circles, triangles, and rectangles. And that's like introductory level art when you're making like cartoons. Like pick a, a shape and build a character based on if it's pointy, they must be mean. If it's round, they must be nice. If it's square, they must be strong. And uh, they're just recycling even those generic templates, it feels like. Yes. So it'd be nice to have Studio Ghibli do a live action Breath of the Wild or even just you know, pick anything. It'd be Majora's Mask or something. And have like a return to western uh movie makers thinking hey like high quality animation is pretty awesome yeah carl andrew says does anybody else love the 2008 incredible Hulk movie yes we are an edward norton family here like it's probably the best incredible hulk yeah all right you can go back to what you're doing though. sorry all right, so Parker said, did you see the leak tree for the upcoming Minecraft movie? They might be going the Sonic route, so the character will be animated with the world live action, which makes me more optimistic, to be honest. Me too. I was wondering how they were going to be able to pull that off. What? Isn't that like the... So I see what he's saying, but isn't that the opposite of what Minecraft should be? Isn't but the, the world whole... Should be okay, yeah. so the isn't should the be value like... of Minecraft the pixelated world? Because... If the world's live action, is it going to be like live action grass, but when they hit it, it, it becomes 8-bit? Oh, yeah, or is it does. going to be a pixelated dude who's digging real looking dirt? Oh, you know God. what I'm saying? I because, hope not. That sounds awful. Because, but that's what I'm saying. Like, Let's pull up the uh, tree that he's talking about. It's a leaked Minecraft tree, you said? I think it'd be funnier as well if you actually have like real people in a Minecraft world and like someone picks up one of the pickaxes and he's like, it's giant, it's all 8-bit, and he's having to use it. Oh, dude, some of these things are horrifying, guys. <laughs> We're just going to go ahead and uh, share the screen. Because, uh, yeah, some of these are just creepy. There's, I see something here with Jason Momoa's face on it. Yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> the Jason Momoa one. <laughs> Jason Momoa is creepy. Yeah. Look at this, guys. That is your Steve. Holy crap. That's horrifying. Um... No, look up the tree. You just said the tree. I'm just going to get random trees. That's why I was like, that's why I didn't do that. But. Oh, is this it? Is this what you're referring to? A tree from the set. I'm on Reddit now. God knows what I'm about to run into. <laughs> and... Definitely going to get a virus. Yeah. If that's it, then. So I guess that's kind of like a mixture of having a. Real and. It's real, but it still looks pixelated. That's not too bad. Oh. Yeah. It's... Yeah. I could get behind that. That still looks pixelated. Well, yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. We're here for it, Parker. We're here for it. Dan Martin said 100% agree with the fake outrage about blackface. Andy, no one th thought a thing about Robert Downey Jr. in that role other than thought it was hilarious. I can't stand the revisionist judging of what is offensive. My favorite is when a bunch of like virtue signaling white people were outraged, but they had a whole panel with like Jamie Foxx and stuff talking about how hilarious it was. And their only takeaway was, great, you're going to steal black people roles from us too. And... <laughs> Again, oh shit! That's it's funny. like understanding what the joke is. It's just making fun of Hollywood. Yes. Yeah, so if you had had a black actor playing that role, that black actor would first have to be in white faced in order to be playing Kirk Lazarus, who's a white Australian actor with blonde hair and blue eyes. So yeah, and that's nowhere near as funny as having Robert Downey Jr. in childish makeup. Mm -hmm. Like when they roll him out Dude, yeah. from the thing, and he's looking at. It's so bad. It's just, yeah. You also remember that video where he's like the guy's in the bathtub as well? Yeah. It's just like the funniest shit. He committed so hard to it. Parker said Disney doesn't want real already content. Everything has to be targeted towards kids. Yeah, I'm saying, yet the most anticipated movie of this year is mm -hmm. Deadpool and Wolverine. I almost said Deadpool 3. <laughs> Terrence Halsey said, 
yeah, an actual Matrix TV show done right with Del Toro or Raimi or Fincher would be revitalized and franchising. That'd be cool, man. Mm -hmm. Bring in Denny. I think that that's about to be <laughs> the prevailing wisdom in Hollywood. I think after Dune, yeah, I'll do. I think between he and Nolan, they're going to be able to just do whatever they want. Um, I was like, wasn't Nolan just talking about uh, Denny's films? I saw an April Fool's Day thing where they talk about uh, Denis Villeneuve and uh, Nolan. Nolan teaming up for a movie. <laughs> it's like, as great as both of them are, their styles are not yeah. compatible. At all. <laughs> you know what it would be? It would be like, uh, it would be like, um, shit, what's it called? <laughs> like, like Alice in Wonderland or whatever, like where you go and when she goes through like the little, oh. around, you go from like one style to something dramatically different. different. Okay, yeah. yes, that would, yes. Parker says Marvel needs non standard universe films and shows not tied to the MCU and not multiverse forced to be connected. Not shared. Non shared. What? You said non standard. Oh, sorry. My bad. Um, yeah, they keep lying and say they're going to do that with uh, Echo, and that's obviously not true. I think they intended to stop having all these shared universes and they see that those don't work either. And it's nothing. It's not that multiverses are inherently bad. It's the storytelling is lazy yeah. and they're using the multiverse for, to not have consequences. And so when you have like Dr. Strange and the multiverse of madness and the bad guy or the, the zombie version of him just shows up. And so you get to see what it'd be like if he dies, but there's no consequence for him dying. And that's kind of the MCU as of late. Like nobody's death means anything. That's actually a yeah. Disney thing. Like it's nobody can die Disney. since Tony Stark. Like no. everybody's just fine. Doesn't matter if you get like, I'm waiting for the Star Wars where you get decapitated and they're like, oh, this is going to take a little while, but we'll get them back to normal. Just because they'll need to make you think a character is in danger, but then like they can't be in danger. So they'll be fine. Yeah. Dale Martin said, I watched Edge of Tomorrow for the first time. It's such a damn good movie, other than the ending kind of did make sense that he got that power to reset the time back, but the mimic aliens were still dead. I haven't watched Edge of Tomorrow in forever. But I, aren't they supposed to be making a second one? I've heard, I've heard talks that. about it, but I, I've not really kept up with it. Daniel, I think they're making a second one since Tom Cruise uh, signed that deal with Warner Brothers. Mm-hmm. Dan Martin said 2014 was a great year for movies. You had Winter Soldier, Godzilla, Gone Girl. I'll even say Guardians of the Galaxy because it was enjoyable and did really well. The Lego movie. No, that was actually really good. I mean, Gar the first Guardians of the Galaxy was really fucking fun. I really liked it. It just kept getting progressively worse with each film, and then you're just kind of like the saddest finale possible. I was like, with that brought up, what do you guys think about Guardians of the Galaxy? Because was it Zoe Saldana recently said that she thinks that it would be a complete waste um, for Disney not to continue with Guardians of the Galaxy, but she doesn't want to come back. And like, how do you continue on? Like, the last one was supposed to be the end. Well, they, I mean, she shouldn't have been back for the third one. It was yeah. terrible happening. Well, yes, but also the new if they do another Guardians of the Galaxy, it will be a team led by Rocket and having the. The gold dude be in there too. Like that's all it's gonna be. It's gonna be like the new Guardians of the Galaxy in the MCU. As much as I don't like a lot of the Disney Plus shows, I like a Guardians of the Galaxy featuring Rocket is something that should be done as a Disney Plus show. Yeah. Like as a series. That's something that's being like is begging to just be like a Disney Plus show. Except with the VFX it probably cost far too much. <laughs> this is probably true. But like if you use Rocket and then Groot, I think you'll have a show. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. because they still make don't they make uh, group TV shows? They do little specials with them every now and then, like a holiday special with group and shit. So it's like you have the you, know, you always you have, have the there. capability. Yeah, but... exactly. You always have them there if you need them. If they did a TV show with Rocket, I think that would be good. But if they tried to reboot the entire Guardians of the Galaxy franchise, I think that's stupid. Oh yeah, dude, it would just it'd be too soon as well. I love when Tom Cruise plays the asshole. The way his character progressed in the movie made him more sympathetic and a character you could get behind. Emily Blunt gives a great performance. Yeah, um, but I mean, his greatest role is still Lester Grossman. Lester Grossman. Like, and that he's even bigger asshole than that. Yeah, yeah. So the more he devolves into being an asshole, the better his performances are. Maybe that's his like acting style. He has to be the biggest piece of shit on screen. By God, you're gonna get a fucking amazing performance. Emily Blunt was amazing in that movie, though. 
I mean, I really liked End of Tomorrow. I thought it was like a really well done film. Like, and during that time, I wasn't a huge Tom Cruise fan. A lot of people hate that. <laughs> but I watched it. I was like, oh, it's actually a really cool sci fi film. I was like, oh, this is kind of right in my alley. It's like the kind of rewinding the clock and going back in time to fix the mistakes. I enjoy you, that. You know what's crazy is you never hear Hollywood talk about what Emily Blunt has done and her contributions to like the action genre. Into pe- because females? It, because it completely defeats their narrative that people have a problem with like strong female characters yeah because she's blatantly said she hates the if it says that on the script she's like pass yeah so when we say when they talk about being female let it being crap that's not just like a whole my little shock opinion that's like people who know shit in hollywood being like that's a script you just don't you know return the call for no because it's automatically a red flag just a strong female character she's like this is gonna be shit yeah <laughs> Terrence Howard said Emily Blunt is phenomenal in everything that she's in, and a great foil, if you will, to Tom in that film. Yes, dude, I'm super excited to see the Fall Guy. Like Emily Blunt is going to be amazing. I feel like she's kind of an underrated actress because she all the movies she's in are actually like really fun to watch, and like The Quiet Place is like a really good franchise too. Like I don't think she gets enough love. Well, I'm sure she pissed uh, the right people off when she said she doesn't like the mm-hmm. strong female character narrative. Well, she's a strong female character in uh the quiet place and she doesn't have to say a single fucking thing <laughs> which is it's very which true proves you, you don't need a male character to affirm that she's been great all along for like a female to be a well-written character like yeah. she can just do things that make sense to a character shockingly really, really good. actions speak louder than words yeah like a mother going and trying to find her child after she's just had a baby is pretty badass mm-hmm. yeah What's up, Sin Havoc? So Disney needs to get rid of Hulu and Update Plus with the mature section on their platform. So I don't know if I don't know if Disney can survive without Hulu. See, I used to think it was the other way around, but uh, who's talking about anything that's coming out on Disney Plus right now? Whereas Hulu's actually got some, you know, because of their deal with FX, they actually have some pretty good shows. And didn't Shogun's someone really say good. recently that? Like Disney Plus isn't offered in all countries, and the yeah, Hulu some places is. it's just Hulu. Yeah, which I think makes sense because Disney Plus could be a section on Hulu, yeah. for like yeah. just called Disney. That's very true. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like you have comedy, you have family, and you have just have a Disney section, and which really shows like even if you love Disney, there's really not necessarily enough content, and they can't rotate content because they don't buy other people's content Nine, nine. to there's a- be a platform of, in its own. Yes, and recently a uh, like survey came out that most people who even watch Disney Plus are watching all of the old stuff. Yeah. No one's watching like their new stuff. Which you know they have the numbers for. We uh, we talked about that last night with uh, Necron and Austin and uh, Leon from the New Geeks. They're talking about how with the Snyderverse now being on Netflix, they're getting the numbers for it yeah. because they can evaluate whether or not it's worth it. You don't think that the the, the things that are coming out from Bob Iger about there being a lack of quality and that they need to get back to creative, you know, storytelling, that they need to cut cost and streamline. And then the layoffs, let's not forget the layoffs, the thousands of people they laid off. You don't think that's coming after they're seeing the numbers for their streaming and they're like, it's not good. We're spending $200 million on a show like She-Hulk and it's getting like a couple thousand views. I don't think anyone's watching that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's I don't amazing. think anybody watched it to begin with, except the hyper polarized, polarized people who are going to love it just for what it's good for. Or to rage watch it. Yeah. Or hate watch it. Um, Sin Havoc says the multiverse is Disney's get out of jail free card. If mm-hmm. they use it right. There's always an if, you guys. Because I feel like when they have the multiverse, they get lazy. First, I agree with Andy. Another Gardens of the Galaxy would be a great Disney show. See, everybody who says I just hate Disney, it's just, dude, it's where do you put it? It's not, it's nothing against the work. It's just, they're not putting in any effort. You know, they're not doing things that make sense. We talked about that the other day. Nothing that they're doing seems like the business decisions of a company trying to make money. Um, Parker said, is Monarch good? No spoilers, please. I only have seen the first two episodes. What is good? (laughs) No, I mean, I don't mean that. Parker, I have to take a moment because I'm like, I'm trying to think of parts of it that I feel like are unnecessary. I enjoyed it, but again, it's because um, 
He gives the backstory. And it's kind of a mystery. I enjoy yeah. that there's a little bit of like a slow unfolding mystery. There's an intrigue of like what's going on and how's Monarch set up. Um, I think you should watch it. Yeah. I definitely should watch it. I'm trying to think what I would compare it to on TV. Like late late season Walking Dead. Or late later series Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. Where there's the roots of like some story there, but no sense of urgency to get to any of it. Where if you enjoy the aesthetic, you'll enjoy it. But I mean, the it's convoluted. They, they can't decide whether or not they want to tell the story that they ended on with, you know, gods and uh, monsters or whatever. Yeah. Or if they wanted to pick up and tell this, like, lineage story. And so I was interested in seeing the formation of Monarch. Yeah. And, like the and without couples. spoiling anything, that's not the show's focus. It is a little bit of, it's a little misleading. And when you watch it, I think you'll agree, they don't know what the most interesting thing in the show is. No, they're but don't I think say that's anything, all, but yeah, I'm just saying. I, I think the first the way it ends, you're like, oh, confused. that's what should have just been the whole. Yeah, the whole season should have just been the way it ended. Yes. What's up, guy? Guy says Bob Iger's little trick is to label his politics as common morality instead of political, so he can label Disney's products as non-political. Yeah. Fuck yes. That, we we yeah. talked about that yesterday. Um, I can't remember who. I'm blanking in the comments. It might have been a uh, custom builder. Somebody said um that they love how the media had uh branded nelson peltz a pure capitalist oh, Watts. yeah sorry andrew watts yeah as an activist and i'm like well that's what they do that's the double speak is you accuse people of the thing that you're doing and so you try and push this narrative that anybody that i'm a centrist and anybody who doesn't believe what i believe is extreme and that's just not true like there's nothing controversial about Disney shareholders saying, hey, I invested in a company that specializes in making family entertainment. Mm -hmm. That's why I gave you my money. I would like for you to do that again. And <laughs> Disney's like, yeah, but we can't do that because even though we did that for the past 80 years, it turns out saying just make quality family entertainment is actually a right wing extremist viewpoint. And, and so if it is, then you have to believe that for 80 years, Disney has been adhered to white right wing nationalist extremism yes. and it's just it's ludicrous you know and that also doesn't fit into their narrative that they want to gain a more diverse audience they don't want to gain a more diverse audience because they don't tell diverse stories they have no interest in telling stories from other parts of the world they have no interest in depicting races in a way that is not just american yes you don't see other than black panther what african stories have they told what asian stories do they tell you know, if they wanted to tell diverse stories, why are they not trying to tell stories from, you know, the the two billion people that live in Asia? That's you true, know, because even Shang Chi, which is like their Asian film, was set in America and it was yeah. Americanized. Holy shit! <laughs> I never realized. I'm so right. it's like they bring it over, and it's like everything must conform to like just this Western, Western view. view. But then again, they're not informed, or they don't have been a big enough worldview to realize that what they're doing still is like American. Americanizing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they're legitimately surprised when this very small, again, there's 300 million people in America, but there's 8 billion people in the world. And so that means the vast majority of people don't care about the political issues in America. They yeah. just don't. And so when they forgot that, and they think that the most important thing is whatever Disney is feeling right now, which what they feel is usually what BlackRock is telling them to do. Yeah. Then it's you wonder why they don't make money in uh, Asia anymore. Why, why their or even Chinese yes. box office is terrible. And yeah. then, yeah, realistically, let us know in the chat, guys. What percentage of the population do you think are invested in these stories that Disney's trying to tell? Yes, I'll tell you right now. It's 80% down from what it was at the peak of where people are feeling guilty about everything. Because films that used to make a billion dollars don't even guilty. make 200. Yeah. And yeah. so the guilt trip doesn't work anymore. It's kind of like when you've been told you're an asshole long enough and you just sink into being an asshole. It's like, okay. Which is why they had to rephrase it. Now it's, you're not a decent person if you don't agree with what Disney's doing. Yeah. Which is, again, the claim that, well, why are they not being decent? And so I want to hear someone ask Bob Iger that. What is not being decent? I wonder if it is a Disney mandate to stop calling people bigoted and racist and, racist and toxic because mm -hmm. there has been a downturn in the use of that terminology. And yes. on a separate note, I don't know if you guys saw, Stellar Blade got an apology from IGN. I did see Did you that. see that? No, I didn't. Because they're calling 
uh, people incels. And they were like, like attacking the game developers and saying like, you know, and again, despite what you hear from the access media, their viewpoints are not popular. Dude, it's like maybe 10% of the people that are chronically on Twitter who are just crusaders for grievance. Yes. They are merchants of grievance. Everything that isn't bowing to whatever their momentary cause is, because it will change tomorrow, is inherently a hateful person because these are people that need to feel persecuted in order to have an identity. It's very sad. You shouldn't be angry at them. You should feel sorry for them because eventually when they sober up, they will feel incredibly foolish. Let's see what their numbers are. Dude, that's why I was laughing just now. Sin Havoc says 1% are invested in Disney storytelling. Dale Martin. That's like point zero 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 one percent and self-loving liberals basically. <laughs> yeah. Tara said about ten percent and then five percent of people of which are people who drink the Kool-Aid and the other five are YouTube reviewers. Now I actually that's probably a little closer. Yeah, there's always going to be a disproportionate on anybody who feels strongly enough to talk about it, you know? Yeah. And so yeah, and I mean to be fair. That's also on the inverse of the people that, you know, make their bread and butter attacking it. It's because, you know, they're the most hyper, you know, polarized version of that community. Yeah. Dude, Jim Stormcrow. Jim Stormcrow said Asians are white adjacent. <laughs> Jim, oh my goodness. <laughs> Such a controversial take. How brave you are. <laughs> Bro. The only thing you think of is Pedro Pascal White. <laughs> and, Jim, and Jim can say it. Jim can say it. All right, Daniel Martin said the eye roll, Katie. The Katie eye roll tells you everything you need to know about Monarch Parker. I don't know. It's not that no, bad. No, it's, 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 I'm trying to be measured. I'm, yeah, it's because I'm specifically thinking about certain parts of the show Parker that I feel like were unnecessary. They focus on specific people during certain episodes that I feel like they could have completely like disregarded. There, but, yeah. There's, but other than that, it's no, it's enjoyable now. Tara says because he's a Godzilla man, Mark sucked ass. But it's okay. So it's not focused solely on the the monsters, Parker. It finds itself in a very weird space because if you like, so again, there's two camps of Godzilla. There's those who like Godzilla to be a event that affects human beings and likes to see how humans are affected by Godzilla. And there's people who like to see Godzilla, the kaiju who fights. For if you want to see that, there's not really enough Godzilla to make you be like, oh, sweet, fucking Godzilla. And if you want to see the human stories, the human stories get very confused. Like, I would say the stories with the children don't matter. Yes. They just and that they was, don't. That was my they're not part point. of the legacy of monsters. The the story with the older one with uh was it Kiko? Kiko. Yeah, Kiko. Kiko yep. Um, Lars <laughs> Durs from Durs. Uh, Workaholics and, and uh, you know Russell's kid. Kurt Russell's, you know, Kurt Russell's kid. That's um, awesome. It was, that was really, really good. good. If it had just been set in the 50s and 60s, guys. Awesome. Fucking That's great the reason why I got hooked on the um, idea of like the, the formation of Monarch. I was like, dude, that is fucking badass. Yes. But they instead, you followed yeah. the kids a lot. I didn't care about the son's art exhibits. I didn't care. <laughs> the Amazing. the one who I cared most about, the, uh, again, you've seen two episodes, so I think you know this already, but the teacher, that could have been the most compelling story, seeing the fallout of a teacher who's lost children to oh, Godzilla Kate. just for yeah. her flashback to just be about her and her girlfriend and people be like oh is it you don't want to see uh, a gay story you had this climactic moment mm -hmm. of her losing these kids she's dealing with PTSD but in the flashback none of that none of that fucking none of that it's just to a character that you don't care about and yeah. then yeah. in the second half I think it, it almost felt like it was written by two different people one who knew Hey, this is called Legacy of Monsters, so maybe we should delve into how Monarch was formed. And the other's like, let's make about the kids. <laughs> and you're like, why? Because it'd be cool, it'd be fresh. Young people love it. And it's like, yeah, it'll it'll gain a younger audience. We're trying to hit that demographic. Yeah. And you're like, well, this is fucking stupid. Yeah. So that's just my takeaway. It was enjoyable. Uh, is it amazing? No. But there's not many shows out there because they're perfect shows. So dude, Shogun like, right now. Yeah, I'd say shows. Shogun's a perfect show. Fucking yeah, good. As I'm saying, there's not many out there. Yeah. Chef Sassy said, there are Disney shows I liked that need a bit of work, like Moon Knight, as I adore Oscar Isaac, and Loki got a bit too much hate, to be honest, from a lot of people. Sadly, the streaming platform is a money pit. So I actually agree with that. Moon Knight started off yeah. great, and like, then decided to go fucking weird. 
thinking about episode four is when I was like, what's going on? What's happening? Yeah, I was confused about where we're going. Um, Loki. Loki season one is like. I feel like it gets hate because in general, the Disney Plus shows kind of suck. And so. What? What, Yes, please. I think in general, the Disney Plus shows kind of suck. And so Loki was just easy to hate. But out of all the Disney Plus shows, Loki's the most enjoyable. Um, and then obviously there was other stuff going on with specific characters that they try to focus too much on that people obviously were really pissed about. But you know, it's it's Disney, so what did you expect? Um, Brogo said to show you that you can't believe everything you hear. Read time for Brogo exclusive rumor: Wall Street Journal reports Nelson Pelton may lead and vote for Disney board seat. What? <laughs> so no, there's actually. Um, and now, bro, I don't know if this is rumor or not, but I think it's actually factual. Someone's actually suing Disney yeah. because they were leaking um, where the votes were going, like how it was going. Yeah. And so, so supposedly there's this lawsuit. Well, it's part of, yeah, they want to demoralize the voters. Yeah. Um, ask yourself where you see that else elsewhere, guys. Pretty common <laughs> tactic. Uh, again, growing up in the third world, we see that shit all the time. You know, they'd have votes and... Uh, in South Africa, like there's like COPE or the ANC would be talking about how it's just a done deal. Like don't even bother voting. Yeah. But in South Africa, you're voting to stop one party from getting like 75% of the vote Did- because then they can change willy nilly change the constitution. So not even that. I've only recently seen that with the voting in America. Yeah. Well, I think in America, <laughs> it's like two thirds. Yeah. Something like that. But hey. Parker said, what's wrong with escapism and also what's wrong with leaving children alone from pedo type grooming? Parker's throwing some. Be careful, uh, P. Diddy shade. will show up at your house tonight. I'm joking. <laughs> the, the, allegedly, the, the allegedly, diddler. I don't know. I don't know. Um, friends of Diddy don't like that joke. His friends of Diddy. Were on the plane. No. Um, <laughs> did he do it? Um, Stop. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with Dude. escapism. That's what entertainment is. Um, that said, I think there's. In, He's talking in, about Disney, though. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's important stories that should be controversial. But guess Thank what? You. I don't think everything is inherently worthy of controversy. Um, in the chat. And when you take vanilla stories, but you try and add unnecessary, I mean, let's like think about films that probably don't need to have a, a real message. Probably Marvel. Like Marvel films currently don't. Um, especially when the Marvel comics have a message that they're not willing to adapt. And so we don't need 10 years of the same story of like, right now being told through Marvel. No. And then also, Parker brings up a good point. He said, isn't Riley rumored in Inside Out 2 to be bi? Nothing against bi people, but isn't she like 12 or 13? Yes, she is tw- like 12 years old. She's going through puberty. There's, so I mean, it's, I guess it's just how people feel about this. I think it's ridiculous. Um, I don't think you are lacking because you aren't exposed to sexuality early. Um, you only get a short period of your life where you get to just be a kid where it just it's all where every confusing thought doesn't need to be diagnosed and it can literally or explored like every little boy who picks up you know something pink it doesn't need to be evaluated it's like maybe they just like pink man i got a pink water bottle pretty sure i'm not gay you know <laughs> Pretty sure. Just like pink. Pretty, pretty, pretty sure. sure. Again, pretty sure. There's no river long enough it doesn't contain a bin. Um, <laughs> but no, and so, so stupid. And then same with like every girl who's been a tomboy in the past, dude. Like, how many like hit like little girls like to play soccer and do stuff like that? Or like yeah. to play that in the dirt. Your hobby should not be it defining of you in terms of your sexuality. They should just define you based on your interests. The things you like are the things you like. Discuss the things you like. Do not turn the things you like into a check mark or, a or something that can be used to fill out a bio so that nobody has to have a conversation with you. And that's the tragedy of all this. People use these titles because it's way easier. I mean, have you ever seen a meeting or been in a meeting where you have people trying to express themselves and you can tell there's just nothing there, but it really just comes down to them making sure that their title is reflective of where they feel status wise, whether mm-hmm. it's like, I'm the CEO or I'm the, you know, I'm the chief marketing officer. It's like, Oh, what do you do here? It's like, well, uh, I, I, I'm the chief marketing officer. And yeah, you're like, Oh, there's nothing else there. 
that's a universal truth. People who are obsessed with titles and designations tend not to have a lot beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. And we're living in a society that rewards that and allows you to not develop a personality because you can be like, I'm bi. <laughs> I'm bi. Okay. And that, that defines who I am. And be sure to like and subscribe. Just had to hit that free all real quick. But speaking of, oh, Katie, gosh, it. it's gosh, right there. Gosh darn it. What? Well, because we're talking. About also, in regards to the past two nights, I'd like to apologize for the gay stuff. That's not sure I grab. Yeah. That fit perfectly. Thank you so much, Terrace. Thank you, Terrace. Send the check, monster. The uh, how much, Terrace? How much does a monster go for in the UK right now? Because Peter Tyler and I Robert. were riding our motorcycles back from Texas. And we stopped at our favorite gas station, Racetrack, which if Racetrack would like to do a strategic partnership, so we'd be check. open to it now. Um, and these people fleeced us. Like, it was like $4 for a monster. Yeah, I, was like, yeah. I was like, bro. Dude, yeah, I was like, you're Where, bleeding me you dry. Like, you stop? Racetrack. Like, yeah, man. And it's Lafayette. Like, <gasps> That's some inflation. Lafayette putting on airs, man. If there's, if there's a part, dude. I can get an entire po' boy in Lafayette for nine dollars. Where do you get off trying to charge me five dollars for the thing I eat with, like drinking my po' boy? Yeah, I don't know. Foolish. All right. Um, Integrity zero point zero. <laughs> yeah, a rounding error. <laughs> a rounding error. That said, you can tell diverse stories because they're capable of enriching. Like I am a firm believer that learning things and discovering other cultures other viewpoints is inherently rewarding that's why i love reading especially things like sci-fi because it's especially when you deal with sci-fi that deals with like uh like post scarcity and you have stories that aren't dealing with current world problems you can explore deeper more nuanced facets of like human nature but that's not what's going on now <laughs> it's the most reductive uh stuff and like when you don't have a story and you're just trying to find a way to work in the talking points well, then you're they, not succeeding they, as a storyteller that as well as they're taking current stories that do not have that in there and then just swapping characters as if that somehow fits the quota full of twitter peter let's probably have to be over here i actually wanted to bring that up so i don't know if you guys saw today in his attempt to try and uh just continued to bury the truth. Um, Bob Iger came out and said, people use this term woke, and I don't really know what that means. Woke Get the just... fuck out of here. Well, and again, it's it's what Bob Iger does. Um, I actually saved the tweet so I can read it for you guys. Um, By the way, there's no one who is alive today who doesn't understand what woke means. No, but that's I actually want to talk about because guess what? When the term woke first came out, it was actually not a bad thing it just meant you were like conscientious and you were aware of mm -hmm. other people's viewpoints you were essentially a just like a nice guy the thing is the reason people use the term woke is because every conversation cannot be a 10 minute dissecting of the inherent wrongs of that viewpoint and that's what these people do when someone does something that is dishonest, like Bob Iger, he loves to try and make you define his wrongdoing. He is very aware of the decisions he's making because he'll say things like, we need to be creative. So if I were to say, okay, Bob, I would say when people categorize your work as woke, it's when you put creativity second to agenda. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that a fair summation? Mm -hmm. That you're more interested in a social issue than telling a story that happens to be a good outlet or a good... Uh, a good vehicle for that no no it's like we have something that we want to drill down into people's minds and the story comes second and so it's not compelling because if a story's not interesting it's not going to be compelling um but again that was met with like all the seal claps you'd expect people be like yeah it just means whatever the right doesn't like well first of all guys it's not a right and left wing thing it's people who i think it's a people who read thing like i think it's a people who what? aren't on like i think it's people who aren't on twitter all the time literacy is like that <laughs> literacy is a staple your, your media literacy directly correlates to how tired you are and your ability to see through dishonest headlines like so many headlines will bury the lead just like when you hear 
that the new Fantastic Forecasting is historic, that it's a historic. But then you're like, well, why is it historic? Oh, because it does something that's been done many, many times before. So it's not historic. Yeah, that cl yeah. classifies not historic. Um, and actually, there's a quote about it being historic that I wanted to go over in a second. Um, far left. Ooh, what's far left? No, I'm joking. <laughs> we only deal with middle yeah. here, Katie. It's not about being on the left. It's not about being on the right. It's about being correct, guys. Remember and we're correct. Yeah, we're correct always here. Yeah. <laughs> but... No, in the article when they were talking about the Silver Surfer being female and how historic it is, they decided to clarify that by saying, with Garner now part of this cast, Fantastic Four is looking like the most star-studded MCU movie since Avengers Endgame. And much like Avengers Endgame, it make, it's making sure it shows that women can be anything from superheroes to chrome-covered villains. So, so let's unpack that. So first of all, <laughs> This is both completely incorrect and sadly completely on the nose. So this is not a star-studded cast. So if I said to you, name the movies that this cast has been in, can you? So Pedro Pascal. Pascal. <laughs> oh, shit. Na okay. Name a movie he's been in. A movie? The medieval town of a... Uh, yeah, a Nicolas Cage movie. Yeah, Nicolas which, Name a movie that you remember him starring in. Nothing. Nothing. He's been in stuff, but... He's been in stuff I yeah. can't remember, though. Okay. Um, the... Uh, Vanessa Kirby. What movie she started? in? Mission Impossible. She didn't start no, in that. No, I know, but she was I'm saying also in I, Mission Impossible. I only know her from Mission now Impossible. Now she was in um, Napoleon, but most people don't know that. And again, the crossover from people that saw Napoleon that are going to watch Fantastic Four, probably very slim. not very high. <laughs> very um, slim. <laughs> the boy that plays Human Torch. What movies has he been in? None. He's just Eddie from Stranger Things. And again, people will be like, he's been in other stuff. Yes, but has he starred in movies that would... And now he's he got put star -studded. in a lot of movies recently, yeah, but they haven't come of, out yet yeah. because of Strange Things. And then the actor who I think is actually the best of them, the guy from The Bear, bro, what has he been in? Nothing. He was in the movie with Jennifer Lawrence where she was dating the boy. Oh, oh the yeah. That, yeah. 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 And she's, you know, he's fucking Richie from The Bear. And now you've got the girl from <laughs> Ozark. What movies has she been in? I don't so, know. again, this is Not like, that I know this is the DCU stuff, guys. Saying something is star study again, when you lie, you're not doing anybody any favors. Like, favors. Yeah, These like, people know that this is the biggest role. If something's star studded, you should have a sense of, oh my God, can you believe bro, we got Tom fucking Cruise Tom Cruise? Is can, fucking yeah. star studded. If they said, man, can you believe that we got, you know, Chris Hemsworth or Henry Cavill or you know, Keanu Reeves or a Brad Even Pitt. right now, Anya Taylor-Joy. Yeah, if, so, if, if they had gotten Anya Taylor-Joy, though I wasn't interested in that, I'd be like, well, that is a fucking big get for a fucking yeah, Marvel. But film. that also wouldn't make the, yeah. a star-studded cast. It'd be a single cool. star, you know? Also, are they forgetting, like, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 actually has a pretty big star-studded cast? Zoe Saldana, Chris Pratt. Well, they're saying Zoe Avengers Brad Endgame you're is... Completely, you're completely... But no, you're same, missing the point. But since Avengers Endgame, that's all like... But that is since Endgame. Yeah, three came after. Um, okay. Yeah, everybody in that's exactly. a great point. Okay, then Every single it. actor, line for line, yeah. is a bigger actor, is more star studded. Wait, yeah, because yeah. I can I can find a movie for all of them. So again, it's propaganda. None of it's true. Second of all, Endgame did not prove women could be anything because Endgame gave no effort to developing those characters. It was actually people. He just threw the yeah, all, the scene together where it was, it was all women. Deeply disrespectful because. They had 10 years to develop those characters. And the only females they had any interest in developing were Black Widow and uh, Scarlet Witch. Yes. Nobody else got a moment. Captain Marvel got her own movie, but last minute. Yes. It was it was like a it's like a parachute. It was mm -hmm. like, hey, let's drop that in right before. And what other they things had, did they have? Then? They had Pepper Potts show up in an Iron Man suit. Which is stupid. Yeah. And then a couple other they had the guard the Valkyrie for... who that's, that's not cost, proving yeah. anything. She was just also in. They didn't. They didn't back that character. They put her into other things, and that's what Disney does. They the things they don't believe in, mm -hmm. they seed along the way, so they can come back and be like, "Dude, we've invested so heavily in these female characters." But then when they put those female characters in a movie by themselves it and they it. fail it because takes. they <laughs> didn't give enough time to them, yeah, then they want to act indignant. I maintain, had they not screwed over uh, Scarlett Johansson, that Black Widow would have done well. But don't do it. Don't do a prequel after, she's, after dead. she's dead. And also, don't. She sued them. 
You know, she you sued them because yeah. they fucked her on the fact that it was direct to streaming and she didn't sign up for that. Yeah. Scarlett Johansson's a star. Like, if you had gotten Scarlett Johansson, like, wow, I can't believe we got Scarlett Johansson, you know? Yeah. Um, there's no one star studded in this, but compared to who's acting in Marvel films now, you're like, hey, can you believe we got a guy who's in Stranger Things to be in a Marvel film? That's pretty good because guess what? Another guy who's in Stranger Things says he'd never be in a Marvel film. So yeah. that's pretty <laughs> So it's like, dude, we got Eddie. It's like, good, because Finn Wolfhard said, fuck no, I never knew it. Yeah, and, he he like, yeah. and his reasoning is because it's all pretty much mid. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that very true. Now, I think that's hilarious that he uh, took a lie detector. It's like, bro, nobody thought you were lying. Well, so you don't have to convince me. You've yeah, you don't have to convince me. I think most people think the MCU is mid. On a separate note, do you guys remember when we said that the Marvel projects were no longer the catapult for your career that they used to be and people, and people lost their fuck. and we us. talked about it when yeah. steven yoon said he'd rather do other stuff and yeah. people said well it's because he has scheduling conflicts and our point was in the old days you worked around marvel you, Dude, would, and then, you would tell the independent film hey dog yeah. i could be in the thunderbolts you might have to hold the fuck off and then i would very yeah. did the exact same thing and said she had scheduling issues and she wouldn't want to be a part of it anymore and so <laughs> now dude now it's not even opinion. We have a lie detector test, guys. That's 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 borderline. That's admissible in court. Yeah. I mean, we that's got concrete facts. Dude, we've got a court yeah. case saying that Marvel hurts careers now. This is ridiculous. Yeah, also Chris, <laughs> dude, the first Kristen part, Stewart also says she wouldn't be a part she of said it. She but she also said that she'd be in anything to make money. Yeah. No, not but, Kristen Stewart. Oh, sorry. Uh, what's her name? That was um. Yeah. Mary yeah. Jane. Mary Jane, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Kristen Stewart said she would want to do the whole process of making a Marvel film sounds like a fucking horrifying process. Which makes sense. Homie, no one wants you to be in an MCU film anyway. I, don't see I think Kristen series. Stewart gets way too much hate. She's been in some bad movies. I think um, she's a... Sh until... Women from, hate Kristen Stewart. I mean, <laughs> well, I'm about to back that up because <laughs> I, I hate Kristen Stewart. But it's also because she ruined Twilight for me. No, um, Twilight ruined Twilight. Whatever. Like, how sucks. could she have saved Twilight? The bitch heavy breeze through her entire acting. Because that was the stage direction. Because there's no there's no dialogue in those. Shit's films. fucking awful. The, the but not that, and there's awful. no way that was her stage direction because she continued to do that in other movies. Yeah, because it's the why you get Kristen Stewart. Gross. All right. <laughs> On to the next. We'll hit some of these comments. I apologize for neglecting y'all. <laughs> go 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 down farther. Just, Just go farther. through them, Peter. Yeah. Okay. Godzilla 1998 got an animated series. Is it good or bad? No idea. Um, before our time. Yeah. Like that, we were like too little. I don't think we saw that. Yeah. I remember the movie though, but we we saw that late, so yeah, we definitely didn't. Catch I didn't, I didn't a, catch the TV show until like way later in life. Okay, that's a response to somebody else, Peter. Right. Breaking reality news: Hollywood is disgusting, and they prey on the most vulnerable. The symbolism is everywhere. Dude, we should just uh, do an esoteric episode where we just break down symbolism, and I'll get I'll get my Real chart weird. out. It's gonna get. We'll He's do that like at midnight or two in the morning because that's when you got to do it. Like, and toast to go. Like, do you smoke cigarettes? Like, no, I don't. But this moment, I do. Smoking man's It'll in this one. It'll be like the from It's Always Sunny <laughs> yeah, episode. Who's like Pepe Sylvia? Pepe Sylvia. <laughs> Pepe Sylvia. <laughs> so, the fact that in It's Always Sunny, the the attention to detail to have Pepe Sylvia written all over the place, and just leave it up to you to realize that that's Pennsylvania mm -hmm. is so good. Like, they don't they don't pander to the joke. They don't. Like you know, it just you know, if you get it, you explained. get it. And that's why if you go back and watch it's always sunny, there's so much there that they just built in mm -hmm. that you can laugh at on like second and third viewings. Shit's hilarious. What's up, fourth one thousand? Said my personality is Pop Tart, fuck toaster strudels. Yeah, and that is incontrovertible because that's your truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is your truth. Oh yeah, by the way, I hope everything's going well with your family, Brogu. Um Yes. Yeah. I hope you're doing okay. Same prayers and love. Okay. All right, those are responses to other people. Yeah, I know. Come on. But I wanted to read some of them. Daniel Martin said, Terrace, have you heard that audio of Meek and Diddy on Twitter? Both of them are done. There's no coming back from that. Cheeks clapping. Sheesh. Slash. I have no idea what y'all are talking about. P. Diddy? No, the, you know he's talking about with the audio with Meek Diddy, Mills? It's pretty incriminating. It's like, it's, it's not a good life ride. <laughs> um, Okay. Oh, see, look at that. Holy this is this is what we do this for. So if you guys are wondering, <laughs> Monster is running in the UK. That's why we started this channel, so I can get, uh, I can subverge that, like, people, you know, get get the lowdown of where I need to be importing my Monster from. <laughs> so, it's all, it's, so it's a pound 50 to two pounds. With the exchange rate, that's like three bucks. Yeah. 
it's ridiculous guys what they've done to us you know, never forget what they took away from us you know these used to be cheap so Brogu drinking the monster Terry House I said I'm gonna call my people mom I have no idea what this is in reference to but it's funny okay Gay so Al from South Park is the best representation of LGBTQ and media dude Gay Al is hilarious <laughs> dude everything South in, Park uh, is timeless yeah. I thought like they removed them in later seasons too, though. Integrity said, nah, reading strings the eyes and rots the brain. We no need to read. It reminds me of like those old uh shows. Like I think in Archer they joke about it too, where it's like you uh drink water, you just no fish fucking it. Yeah. <laughs> Integrity, there's freaking audible, my no, dude. Just a fucking list listen to books. <laughs> Dan Martin said, Yeah, Woke well, originally was like enlightened or aware, like red pill Neo. Mm-hmm. Times have changed. Jim Stern Crow, virtue for clout. Dude, and that's the thing. TMR said virtue currency. It is currency. And again, man, I I bear no ill will to anybody, but their narrative is extremely boring. And it's it's a scapegoat. It allows them to never talk of anything real. So they can always just hide behind labels. Um, that's why everything gets you called a racist or and also a misogynist. And it's like, dude. Saying that, I'd rather see the Silver Surfer from the comics who has actual stories instead of the one that was in four issues has nothing to do with misogyny. It just happens to be the one that 99.9999% of people are actually fans of because the other is a footnote. But Amy, that wouldn't give you a scapegoat because if the movie fails, then who are they supposed to blame? Give our fans. Tara said, oh, I'm loving these nice, soothing heart palpitations from way too much caffeine. That sweet, sweet calmness with zero calories. Yeah, if I don't drink them, I just fall into like a, uh, a dreamless slumber. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I want to point out, so they said virtue for cloud and virtue currency. Dude, this is the problem. People who want to have nuanced conversations, we mistake that if you talk to people who are out there screaming and just losing their minds on Twitter, calling everything toxic and racist, that you can actually have a conversation and get through to them and you can't <laughs> no. because their whole policy is just their whole viewpoint is just sloganeering they don't understand it they're handed to them it's disseminated to them in a way like just well, as propaganda always is and so saying something like that like the next time someone tries and just you can tell they're a bad faith actor and that they have no interest in having a conversation you're like dude your currency is no good here you know your virtual currency is no good here and that's how you shut down that because they're given too much room to scream and they have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. And also they're not uh, of sound mind. They're not willing to listen to it, Like they're not trying to have a conversation. They're fanatics. Yeah. They're, their misinformation because they love the term misinformation. Their misinformation has become central to their identity. And so without it, they're nothing. And so of course, when you'd rob someone of their identity, they become very feral. It's very <laughs> Look at the pattern of these people, dude. Those of us who are just fans, dude, we can talk about it. If somebody says, hey, I hate Henry Cavill as Superman, I'm like, oh, cool, man, tell me why, because I'll tell you why I like him as Superman. Yeah. Because I'm not a fucking fanatic. I'm not crazy. <laughs> but when I say I like Henry Cavill as Superman, there's people who are like, he fucking ruined Superman. <laughs> Nobody will ever watch a Superman thing because of what he did. It's like, aren't you saying that you want to see James Gunn? Yeah. Well, well, and then they freak out. And it's yeah, like, like a straight like, stroke. Start bleeding don't mention nose. something I just said to me. How dare you coin me? How dare you? Parker says even non-religious people love films like Prince of Egypt because it tells a universal story that's relatable, such as acknowledging slavery is wrong and evil and saving innocent people from, from slavery. That is a spectacular comment, Parker, because that's actually the perfect way to address these things. I think that's a great example that people don't have a problem with woke ideology. Yeah. Like everybody agrees that slavery is wrong. You gotta be a special type of monster to be like, hey, well, <laughs> I was on the other side of the Prince of Egypt debate, you know? It has its merits. You know what I'm saying? Um, but what great <laughs> stories do is they encapsulate the universal truth and you come away with meaning because these people want to pander to things that dude, they're not it's not controversial to say you should treat women equally it's not controversial to be like hey gay people exist it's like dude nobody's saying no, they and it's, don't it's not controversial you know? to say women can be anything yeah hasn't that been said forever for decades yeah when and was before, it ever yeah. not 
yeah. What was well, that not? Well, universal? decades ago, because yeah. people like, really, you're gonna hear people be like, Katie, you know, people, women die because people don't let them be what they want to be. Like that's literally please, an article I read stop. the other day. Was please, please stop? Yeah. I read an article saying that because the leading cause of death for women is like murder or pregnant women is murder, something along the lines of like, again, extrapolate your own, you know, what? Yeah. You know, yeah. Your own narrative there. Tigery said literally everything the MSM reports is bullshit. Mm -hmm. I think most media outlets, a lot of stuff they report is bullshit. It's a, oh. uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I'd also like to point out, like, I think it's very odd that some people think that news outlets are always correct. Like, well, that's especially true. I think where we live, um, I think Westerners like definitely view the press as a wing of freedom. And so the past couple of years where there's obvious agendas that like Trump them even attempting to be unbiased. Yes. I think that comes as a genuine shock and it catches them for a loop. Yeah, people are like, wait, but I thought any, everything written in the media has to be fact. Again, being from South Africa, like, uh, yeah, I assume the media is working for one of the parties. That's how it is. It's, it's that's propaganda. It is. And again, that's actually, I think that that's the, the great thing about not having grown up in America is you learn that corruption is the default. You know, you listen to like yeah. Milton Friedman talk and he was, you know, explaining that it's not that greed drives economies, it's that in capitalism, it's just that greed is intrinsic. And in, don't call it greed, call it human self-interest. People <laughs> are guided by self-interest. That's very true. And so if you leave something out, most people will take it. Yeah. And to try and ignore that, you leave yourself open to people who will not ignore it to take advantage. And so that's the problem. You have people preaching an altruism that does not exist while they're absolutely robbing the fucking coffers. And it's, it's what you said. It's like, hey, guys, let's all share. Let's do the right thing. Meanwhile, in the background, they're just grabbing it all. And that's how that's how Africa runs. Like, like the most moving, sweeping speeches about unity while they're robbing you blind. <laughs> it's by a new multi-million yeah. dollar house. You're like, how do you get that? Don't worry about it on my salary. Oh, that's fucked up. All right. Vision Rise said, hey, Katie, I was wondering if you could also dress up a silver banshee for Halloween for one of your future live streams this fall. It'd Agreed. Cool. We will spray her down. I actually have <laughs> silver spray paint. We'll go legit. We're not going to do any. I'll tell you right now. We're not going to have spray you in chrome and you go to Valhalla. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> I'll look into it. Mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. It's no, from, from Mad 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 Mad. I know. I'm saying with the fact that he still decided to say it. I know it's from Mad Max. Sid Havoc said, watch out. The liter literacy police are coming. Or else you're not coming for you, fuck. I got it. Um, Avengers Rising, thank you for the comics. We will look into it. I know Supergirl currently is not available. Um, Wonder oh, Woman 1984, man. poor Pedro. I completely forgot he was in that fucking he, movie he because he's a too. ridiculous version of himself. Yeah, that's true. And also, we're gonna have Sean Gunn play him instead, so fun times. Yeah, which also sounds ridiculous. Parker said Jamie Campbell Bauer probably had a good future ahead of him getting typecast in projects. Can you believe they were able to get Sean Gunn? Oh, man, what a get. <laughs> I, I bet you it was I bet you it was pretty hard at Sunday dinner. I bet you that conversation <laughs> where James is like, hey, what are you so, doing, Sean? Nothing. You know, I do nothing. It's like, hey, you want to be a movie? It's like, it's it's all I'd ever hoped for. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. What, what are we a snuff film? What do you want me to be? <laughs> My schedule is completely open. I'll be in. You want me to play multiple yeah. roles? I'm down. I need the money. Yep. Tara said there are so few stars left. Word of mouth trumps everything now. The access media can rot. You can't repeatedly shill and expect to maintain any semblance of credibility. The nope. uh, on a separate note, watching Sean Gunn during the writer strike go on the, the media and yeah. talk about stuff was. Do you guys remember those old clips from like in the early two thousands when the war in Iraq was raging and Andy Serkis, you know Gollum, who's nobody's seen his face yeah. is on the red carpet and he had the sign saying no war for oil and the person who obviously wanted to have the debate because you know they wanted to it's a controversial thing but he asked like, and who are you <laughs> <laughs> I do and it was that. so embarrassing <laughs> it's like, and it's oh. like dude 
Like, if you have well, to wear a name tag, you may not be the best spokesperson. Nobody knows you, my guy. And again, a lot of very talented, important people that work in VFX and motion capture. But maybe you're not the best. When you're looking for a face of something, people need to have seen and recognize your face. Yeah. Yeah. Do I remember asking you who Sean Gunn was? Because <laughs> I remember when people use interviews and I was like, who is that? He's uh, the brother of Jimmy Pistol. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Pistol. <laughs> Bro. All right. Parker. Kind of coincidental, both Stranger Things 4 and Film Smile released in 2022 and had similar concepts with Beckna and the Smile Entity being very similar. I did not see this uh, smile, though. Did you? No. Hell no. Um... Scary. <laughs> scary. Scary. Yeah. Integrity says MCU is far beyond overrated. I miss the days of good, unique solo films. Mm-hmm. Yes. You got to, I, I miss Thor. What was it? The Dark World? That, Ooh, wasn't that fucking great? Exactly. Parker. Blade. I doubt it ever happens. We actually. Parker! Have, you. Again, hold your breath, guys, because they promise it's happening. Where's the, where's the article? Fourth one. Fourth one. Yeah, Marvel's is... Blade reboot gets exciting update after multiple delays. Marvel. Which. Completely propaganda. It is not an exciting update. <laughs> Let me hit the screen share. If you love it, you're excited. You have to click again. it. There we go. Peter, Peter will figure out technology one day, guys. Yeah. Look at this, guys. Man, does he look cool. <laughs> That's the closest we're ever going to do. The question that, is, actually, this picture is from years ago. Yes. Yeah. Honestly, when you actually look at the dates, it is so sad and depressing. Because, okay, so supposedly they're supposed to start filming in fall of this year, but... I have heard that before. Yeah, you'll, but you'll it continues me, to yeah. say that there's still a chance the film will be pushed back to 2026. You don't say. What? They will reimagine, will be reimagined with Marshala Ali in December 2023. That, guys, think about that. This is when he had the last update. Ali gave fans an update on the status of the film saying simply, we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Ali working added on it. that the best I could tell you, I'm really encouraged with the direction of the project. I think we'll be back at it relatively soon. That was over a year yeah. ago. Yeah. Well, not over a year ago. No, yeah, like a couple months, months ago. But knowing that, they cast him in what, 2019? Like it's been fucking forever, you guys. That scene, that's a perfect example. That is a star. Like, I can't believe they got, you know, the Michelle guy from Ali. Green Book. That guy wants to be in a Marvel film? That guy can act. Wow. Like, that makes you feel like this could have been, like, a really good script until they, you know, Tenshin. said they didn't have a script. They fired multiple directors. Did a bunch of rewrites. Look at that, dude. Never forget what they took from us. Look at look at him there. That's my blade. Never forget what they took from us. I do think Marsha Ali will be a good blade if it ever gets made. And if it's about blade. And not about his daughters, as one of the leaks was uh, supposing. That's all it. That's what I'm saying, guys. That's the update. What do you guys make? They're supposed to start filming. That was something else that people talked about with the confirmation that it's going to be a female Silver Surfer. That it potentially also um, confirms that there's going to be like that the leaks are true about there being this love triangle between. Um, Vanessa Kirby's character and the Silver Surfer, I think, was one of them. Yeah. And that Pedro Pascal is going to be like an overbearing husband or boyfriend or... Well, if it's like, Silver yeah. Surfer now, it's going to be a lesbian relationship. Cause... Yeah, I think they said that might be gay in it. So stupid. What's up, Skywalker the Jedi? Said, is this Fan Rant Thursday or is this Fan Rant Thursday? You know, we got to be careful because sometimes we try and do these on Wednesdays. <laughs> we are not very good at the dates. Sky is coming back from New York. If you guys have not seen Sky's... Um, stream of the Rebel Moon uh, release party, I guess it was. It was the premiere for the Scargiver. Very, very cool stuff. Um, Again, I'm not going to get into it because you need to go watch it. He had an interview with the man himself, Zack Zack Snyder, Snyder. that you need to go see. It's it's very, very cool. 4,000 says, Stranger Things guy, a star, the guy who wore a wig the whole season, and if you squint, you can tell it's him. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's your star. Tara said Kristen Stewart should play Catwoman in the next Batman film and traumatize Robert Pattinson, who's trying to forget his Twilight era. Dude, <laughs> and and also trying to forget her, because they used to date. To be honest, instead of Catwoman, she should be Poison Ivy, because she has the acting range of a plant. What? She should be Poison Ivy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Brogu, what are you talking about? Of course we love your super chat. So that was a new super chat. I'm sorry, Brogu. I really appreciate it. I thought that was, and that's why I clicked on it. But again, Peter's <gasps> made this very concerning. Oh, Brogu, I'm yeah. so sorry. Okay, Brogu, we're, we're going to get real with y'all real quick. So Peter's supposed to be orchestrating the background stuff since he's not on screen, and he is failing at his job. <laughs> and so he was supposed to be figuring out the comments. And as you can see, that Andy and I have had to take over. So I apologize. It was a little bit confusing. Peter's flipping us off from the other end. Yeah. So, Brogu said, Frank and Monster with Katie, Peter, and Andy cut the mo check monster. Yes. Thank you so much. We honestly very much appreciate all of the super chats you guys give us. We don't want to miss any of the chats. The super chats yes. are very touching. And we thank you for bringing that up because I'm so sorry I skipped over that. If we miss stuff, guys, call us out because we're not good at this. <laughs> we're just perennial fuck ups. How much longer do you think Disney has to underperform before they place for Bob Iger? Another year or two max. So, it's a year. Because, I don't know. Well, because he's, currently, he, he's there till 2026. I'm saying currently they said he, they're looking for his replacement for next year. Now, we'll, if they will find one, that's up in the air. But that's that's the deal. That's the 411. <laughs> they're they're looking for a replacement. But supposedly, he Bob Arger is just so great at his job, he's irreplaceable. It's going to be really hard to replace him, guys, because as you know, George Lucas said, it's really hard to make movies and to do the things that Bob Iger does. On a separate note, back to uh, Brogu's comment about the monster. The monster is very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, man, my dream for this channel, we don't, we don't talk about dreams, you know, and I'm not a man of lofty expectations, but if we could have it where the fandom ah. that, you know, this community we're building you know, drinks enough monster that monster feels it on Thursdays, you know, when I mean, they're like, Oh shit, what's going on on Thursdays, man. I could, no, nah, we made it, you know, we, we made it. Can you imagine? Like, there's just like a news report. like, what's going on Thursdays with like, you just can't get monster. Like if that was a Reddit thread, I'm like, Oh shit, that's us. That's us. Like, <laughs> that's us. Can you? No, I, so I feel like we'll have made it if there's a Reddit thread about our channel. There's probably going to be negative ones, but yeah. <laughs> um. Oh my gosh. Okay. Dan Martin said, feminists just regurgitate ideology that already has existed since the 60s, creating problems that don't exist. Now, this controversial take here, um, I've actually recently watched a video where a feminist was having a, uh, doing an interview, and the guy was like, okay, I understand you're a feminist. He's like, but explain to me, what is it in today's day and age that women are unable to do. And she's like, what do you mean? He's like, what are women not able to do that men can do? And she's like, well, fuck, I don't, nothing. And he's like- I didn't think you were gonna have a follow-up question. See, this is how bad we feel. Look, bro, you. I understand forgetting about me, but they looked at it and just moved on. We we couldn't tell because we were trying to share a screen what was being clicked he said on. He understood. He said, and just, and yeah. I think they're and just like that, I'm their number one fan. <laughs> bro, we love you. I promise we wouldn't have just passed by it. Look at this. Already with the cancel hold my door. I, I, knew, this, I knew it was brewing. Fair weather was. fans. I gotta be honest. There's merit to it. Like, Just go to Jim Stormcrow. They are looking for something that will confirm their status as the propaganda protagonist. I don't, know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where I was going with that. As a protagonist in the story, to do so, they have to identify everyone who disagrees with them as the antagonist. Very true. The, the merging of, you know, everybody lives two lives. You live the real world and your narrative world. And to see people whose need to be victimized has seeped to the point where they're like openly explaining and projecting their narrative view of the world mm -hmm. into public. It's pretty, it's pretty spectacular because usually when people do that, it's like, it's like cause for concern. Yeah, yes, it is a cause for concern. And again, it's why, you know, it's easy to laugh about it, but I do legitimately feel sorry for people who feel that disconnected, you know, that they need to see boogeyman everywhere. Because it's oh, not, yeah. you know, it's, it's a sad, it's a sad way to look at the world. I think most people in their engagements find that people are just like, nice. You know, we went and saw I think most the American Society of Magical Negroes and there was the insinuation that like holding the door open for someone was linked to like white supremacy and like that it was somehow victimizing black people. And every time I'm at a gas station, regardless of who 
raise whatever, people hold the door open for one another because you know what? People are fundamentally decent and like doing small acts of kindness for one another. Yeah. And so in order to have that worldview, you have to have sw- flipped a switch in your brain where just the, the things that we do in a society to be kind to one another, those no, olive better. branches, that that that's actually a microaggression. <laughs> yeah. That, oh, I'm not holding a door open for someone because, hey, there's another person. And it's a nice thing to do. It's because I've been conditioned that I'm less than. And, and so, what am I, your doorman? It's like, dude, no, it's. What is the alternative? See and be like, process. I'm not locked into your propaganda and smash the door on them. <laughs> That's what a liberated person does. Yeah. But I'm like to make that connection and thought process is just it's sad. And again, when you don't have enough going on, I mean, I think that's why, like, you know, with the zombie films, why there are people that hope that we have a zombie apocalypse. When you're that unhappy with mm-hmm. the state of like, if you're not engaged with your own life, if mm-hmm. you feel like your life doesn't have meaning, it's easy to hope for a catastrophe. And so when the media offers you a convenient narrative where everybody is out to get you, well, well, that can be a powerful bit of propaganda for someone who has nothing else to hold on to. Yeah, it has a sad, sad life. Parker says, did you see the trailer for Bambi the Reckoning? Also, is Mickey Mouse Trap delayed because wasn't it supposedly supposed to come out in March? I have not seen the trailer for Bambi the Reckoning, but it does remind me of the SNL sketch with uh, Vin Diesel. Not really. And uh, well, it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be the Fast and Furious Bambi. Oh, gotcha. You know, with The Rock called Bambi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bro, say it was nice knowing you, Terrors. At least now I can stop drinking these damn monsters. <laughs> if they're causing you pain, please don't drink the monsters. We're not trying to kill people out here. Oh my god! <laughs> they're all these people being toxic by proxy. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> they confirm they despise you more. <laughs> Parker, I love that trailer. Better be better than Blood and Honey 1 and 2, which I hear both weren't good. So I heard 2 is at least better than 1. Because Brogu's stirring the pot. I feel a coup coming on. That's what's happening. You know? <laughs> Brogu's fermenting insurrection. Don't leave me. <laughs> I think that thing from Parks and Rec where it's like, you say, you, drink, uh, you don't use indicators? Good idea. this. They've confirmed it. What should the penalty be? Maybe we lock them in a room and force them to watch Justice, Justice League, League on, on a loop, loop for a month? A month? Actually, it's the Marvels. Jeez. I'd, I'd probably just start laughing. Martin, Dan Martin said, Parker, yeah, I've only seen the first Blood and Honey, and it wasn't bad for a low-budget movie, but definitely not good. Definitely room for improvement. So, Bro said they skipped most of my comments, and now Super Chat really hurt. Bro, what? Ch- Holy, I apologize. I told you, we're not good at this. For the said that picture is out of date. Uh, add gray hair in a wheelchair. Speaking of gray hair in a wheelchair... Oh, so he's the like Logan Logan Blade. Yeah, 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 but you know the Logan Paul and uh, Tyson fight. Oh my gosh, when is that happening? I don't know. I have to look it up. But uh, so I saw the best documentary, or not documentary, interview with. And I've talked Mike about this, Tyson. Right? but Mike Tyson, guys, he's talking to William Shatner, and William's like, and I'm like, you said that before every fight, you'd cry. He goes, yeah, you gotta cry before every fight, <laughs> and he's like. Go deeper. Go into that. He goes, because I didn't like who it made me be. I didn't like it. I didn't like it about the anger, about the jealousy. And I didn't like who I'd become when I went to that ring. And he looked like he was getting emotional. And I'm like, holy crap. And so William Shatner's like, that's fascinating. <laughs> and I'm like, can you imagine you're Logan Paul? And you Fuck think no. you're about to fight Mike Tyson. He's like 50 years old. But you just see him before the fight just just sobbing and you're like, oh shit, I'm going to die. <laughs> like, Mike Tyson's about to fucking murder me. He's still got it. He's still got that hate. He's still, he's about to become what he's about to be. That, yeah. And so that would make a great film. And it just, yeah. just like the, in the way the wrestler ended with him jumping, if just, if you just cut to black after him, like the realization that Mike Tyson's crying in the corner, like, oh dude, yeah, this like, isn't going to go the way I thought it would. Dude, and it still makes me think of that SNL sketch you showed me. <laughs> um, oh, well, no, it wasn't SNL. It's it's Peele, Keith whenever he's yeah. like talking about like, their fights, they yeah. like, I'll show him God. He's like, he's like whoa, 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 we're whoa. talking trash, aren't we? Yeah. Tara said, give them a chance when they see the barrage of comments. <laughs> we got to it, you guys. Integrity 101 says, if Superman Legacy plays in a theater and no one is there to see it, does it make a sound? On to Superman Legacy, what do you guys think about the, I guess there are more than rumors um, that Ultraman is going to be one of the villains in Superman. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, oh, shit, there's Sky. What's up? Get your headphones on. Oh, yeah, hold on. What's up? What's going on, y'all? Jesus. How's your so, day been? Oh, hope you guys are uh, having an amazing day as I've been having. 
we had to switch the headphones so we didn't mess the sound. But yes, we are having a great day. Oh Sorry. my goodness. Yo, is this fan rant Thursday or is this fan rant Thursday? Cause I yo, man, I got some heat with all these topics that y'all been covering. <laughs> um, I've been popping in and out as much as I could. Good, but I'm here now and I'm thankful to be on you guys' platform. Uh thank y'all for pulling up last night into the Rebel Moon uh release party live. That was amazing. And um you, you guys are dope and collaborators as always. So much love. Yeah. We're so happy to have you, dude. And you guys are welcome anytime, dude. Um it's been the best part of having this channel is meeting guys like you and your whole crew and then obviously everybody that's a subscriber and pops in um dude take it away with whatever you want to talk about man just happy to have you tell me man about yo let's run through the topics man we can go through them right one by one what you guys uh start out with earlier uh we started off with the female server surfer what do you think mm, right um yeah we're gonna get yo, yo. it's funny because being an early fan of or a fan of the earlier mcu right um obviously when we were thinking about all these characters that we wanted to kind of be in this universe right down the line like all the x-men and you know all that stuff um we had kind of like the iconic interpretations in our brains because that's pretty much <clears throat> what marvel had been kind of trying to give us with the early stages with like phase one um, and that such, right? So um, when we actually get to um, putting these characters in and now we have a character, I mean, what, um, how many issues um, has this Silver Surfer been in, right? Four, right? And all of a sudden like, yo, like, yo, I have a homie who's been waiting to see the Herald of Galactus, right? This entire time and I guarantee you that he never would have thought that we would be getting this version of Silver Surfer in the MCU, right? So um, it just goes to show that um, I really think that, um, you know, they're, mm, what the fans want and what they seem to want to give us, is, there just seems to be a further and further divide. And I don't see it um, getting closer anytime soon, right? You would think that, with the recent losses that they've been suffering that they would kind of start to clean this stuff up but as we've seen recently they're kind of doubling down and like oh no like we're gonna continue to lose money and so it, it seems to be like um maybe making money isn't even the goal anymore right it just seems like that's actually secondary and that's crazy I think that's spot on. Let me uh, hit this super chat uh, before you were in. The, I don't know if you saw. We, we fucked up pretty bad. and We missed one of Brogu's comments, so we're getting we're getting smashed. Uh, <laughs> uh, Donating to the Brogu Monster Therapy Fund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know we're terrible. <laughs> Thank you very much, Terrace. Um, I agree, dude. I don't think this is about money. I mean, we know that though. We know that there's other things at play. Um, the buy uh, the proxy the, war. Yeah, proxy war showed that it comes down to essentially who BlackRock's going to be. You know, backing and BlackRock said they don't care if they lose money. That this isn't this is about culture. You know, it's a, yeah. it's a color revolution. Um, Great. And again, it's it's just not the most iconic version of that character. And so, not at all. Do I do I care that she's female? No, no but I know they care. And it, it's so yeah. obvious that yeah. it's, it's it's like when you we you know when you have like a piece of pizza. And there's like two pieces and you tell the person like take whichever one you want and there's the bigger piece but they're like oh well this one has like less pepperoni i'll take the one with less pepperoni and you're like is that really why you did it like you, right. got, you can see right through them and know the real the the real reason and that's how i felt about the uh silver surfer casting it was long speculated but it was just being confirmed absolutely and uh yeah i'm just you know I'm not shocked that they went this route, if I'm being honest. Dude, the fact that, uh, what's his name? Um, I'm blanking on it. Uh, Stan, uh, Lakeith uh, Stanfield. Lakeith Stanfield, yeah. From, Lakeith uh, Stanfield. Lakeith Stanfield, yeah. He was saying that he was supposed to be the Silver Surfer. I thought that was good casting. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> right? Hey. I, don't, I don't think they would have. I think had the 
fantastic for the initial casting not been met with such just boredom Law. i think yeah. maybe they would have gone a different direction but i think maybe they needed this to push buttons and now they can frame this failure as oh well we're helping progress the plight of female heroines into uh storytelling we'll take away female villains but yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's um, it's really a strange time, and uh, I just wish we could get back to great comic book films, right? That's all we want. Yeah, you know, just actual good storytelling. <laughs> but um, when they're focusing on how historic this casting is, it doesn't really spell success. We uh, shoot. I guess we kind of been all over the place today. I'm trying to think whatever topics right? we uh, we We're really have. Matrix. Yeah, we talked about the Matrix. What do you think about the uh, the rumored, or not the not rumored, the rumored the, it's confirmed, the, yeah, but confirmed like, yeah. Matrix movie. Yeah, with uh, Drew Goddard, right? Um, I mean, hey, um, I think that we kind of knew that this was coming, especially if you saw Matrix Resurrections, right? They even alluded to there being a reboot coming, right? And that this was kind of going to happen. Um, is it a confirmed reboot, or is Keanu in this? Like, I'm not, you know... They haven't it, confirmed anything except that they're going to make another movie. So they right. don't know who's coming back. They didn't announce what even the plot is supposed to be. One of the rumors was that it's part of a package thing to get him to do this so that he could get his uh, Constantine movie for Constantine 2 that he's wanted for forever. Um, but mm. nobody knows for sure. It's all rumors. Who's actually in it? Or if it's going to be complete, like a reimagining. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, if Keanu's back, um and everybody is back that's cool um you know because i you know i'm part of the minority i guess i really liked the matrix four i you know i loved all the little um things that was going on underneath the surface with that film and you know the things that was being touched on and, and, you know i i absolutely loved it right uh i was actually speaking with leon uh, about that recently but um yeah like look if everybody's back, I'm cool. But if we're going to be doing a reboot, you know, I mean, hey, they could maybe fix the issue and uh, bring back Lawrence Fishburne, right, for this one. Because that was a pretty uh, big hole that I feel was kind of left um, unfilled. So, yeah, I think that if everybody's coming back, they have a chance. It really kind of brings some fresh blood in, fresh perspective. But have the same kind of characters in this sandbox uh but if we're talking reboot i don't know about that you know i i don't know i'm so that's why i'm glad you're here man because it's good to have different opinions like um i hated i hated it and it was just because one not having lawrence fishburne and then really? in that in that initial scene big hole. no yeah. that was a big hole the, the lack of lawrence fit like you brought everybody back but no. Lawrence Fitzburn, so I'm with weird, you. Huh? I'm, I'm with you 100% on the lack of Lawrence Fitzburn thing. So can't even argue yeah. that. Um, but outside of that, we just kind of been actually, you know, the first comment we actually had was South Cali guy wanting us to comment on uh, your interview with Zack Snyder. And we said from the beginning, we didn't know that you'd be able to make it in here. So we didn't you know, reveal, but we said we might have a guest on the channel. Um, and so we can actually finally hit that. But I said, you know, I think it's awesome, but I didn't want to get into it. That's your story. And I know you worked really hard for that, you know, man, there's no way that I was going to miss this. Um, when you, you sent the invite out, I was like, yo, I got to pull up. I was actually rushing back here. You know what I'm saying? I am safe back in California on my side of the, you know, <laughs> country. Right. But, uh, Hey, shout out to NYC. Cause everybody was great, man. From, literally like um the lift drivers the cab drivers just everybody that i interacted with everybody at the hotel everybody at the event um everybody at the airports was super dope um except atlanta man look <laughs> delta <laughs> man y'all gotta move with some purpose you know what i'm saying like it's like i was just standing there i was anyway but um uh, <laughs> outside of that no, everything was great. Um, and the energy at the at that event was fantastic. Um, it was dope being able to shock and surprise everybody. Like, oh man, like what is this, right? So, um, you know, it was a dope experience. And uh, the Zach conversation definitely was like the highlight of the night. Um, it sucks because we had some audio issues, but. 
I mean, y'all y'all have no idea how loud it was in there, especially you know, when, imagine. like, because um, if you guys notice, I kept going back to this one area where the music, wait, right where I talked to Wes at during the end of the um, stream, uh, it was a little bit quieter back there. And so the audio was coming through a lot clearer. But uh, near the exhibit, it was like right off to the left of the stage and where everybody's going crazy at, right? And it was just, man, it was a zoo in there. It was wild, but it was amazing. And so um, when Zach hit the exhibit, like he literally like, I mean, they, everybody pretty much stopped him like right at the, <laughs> right when he walked in, you know what I'm saying? So he couldn't even really get in like that before everybody was like, hey, is that? And um, so it was right near the stage and it was just so loud in there. Uh, but, um, you know, we are working on that for next time and we've already come up with some ways that we're gonna kind of fix that uh, in these type of situations. But, uh, yo, just being able to speak with him and to ask him a couple of questions was amazing, just like it always is. And yet, I asked him first, I was like, hey, because Rebel Moon Part 1, to me, it seemed like the culmination of like Zach's career in a lot of different ways. Um, there's just all these little things in that film from each of his past films, even from like you know, um, the Legend of the Guardians, right? With the whole Benu scene, right? Like, just things like that. There was callbacks to each and every single one of his films. And so I asked him about the journey there. And he was like, yo, Netflix just came and was like, yo, do you want to make this movie? And he was like, yo, like, let's do it, right? And um, the night really culminated when I asked him, like, hey, um, is there anything that you feel like you learned on Rebel Moon that you could use in your DC films if they're able to acquire the rights? And Zach was like, yo, I really feel like we were just kind of cutting our teeth on Rebel Moon. And yeah, like if Netflix gets it, like we're, we're ready to go. And I was just like, like what? Like, hold up. Like, and it, to me, that screamed like we're ready to go. Like everybody's on board. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, yep. I mean, I didn't know how else to take that. Right? He's like, "Yo, like we're ready to go. If Netflix gets it, we're ready." So I'm like, "Man, uh, yeah, that was definitely, definitely the high point of the entire night." But man getting to talk with Ray Fisher and just everybody, man, it was just, it was just an amazing evening. And, uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody that was, uh, pouring into that thing, be it the live crew, the panel, the chat, the replay crew, everybody that, you know, held it down. And it was, man, it, it was just a great evening all around. And I couldn't have asked for a better night. Yeah, it was awesome, dude. Um, you killed it, man. You were like doing the work, hitting all the uh, hitting all the different things. The the book you showed looked awesome. The photography oh, there was really God. cool. Um, dude, Necron pointed out like a great made a great point, and I think it was when your mic was cutting out, maybe. And he says, "Yeah, man, you wouldn't be ready to go for something that wasn't okay. at least being thought of or discussed. You know, you don't play in for Ooh. things that are just." Never gonna happen, you know. <laughs> they said we're ready to go. And in Hollywood like, speak, if it wasn't something that was being discussed, they'd be like, you know, we're really focusing on what we're doing now. And you know, I really enjoyed my time with that, but I think we've turned, you know, like there's that softball, like and now there's none even, of that. Even think about this. The first part of that statement, I feel like we were cutting our teeth on Rebel Moon. Right? Like. That means you getting ready for say, yo, come on. Is that not like, yo, both parts of that statement are we're, we're preparing to, you know what I'm saying? Like to go do this thing. Right. Yeah, I 
hundred percent agree. I think uh, we're about to see an era where directors become the new kind of stars of Hollywood, and you see that happening. You know, Universal, Nolan, got Nolan, yeah. uh, Denny's going to be the next guy who's up, and Netflix grabbed Snyder, and they're all in. And so people want to like we talk about it when you interviewed it with us last time. This idea that Netflix has no money—that's not true. Um, right. We've got Bob Iger out here saying that he, you know, admires and wishes they had Netflix's model. Yeah. That's always Netflix been the case. have Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. What are we talking <laughs> are they about? Really? Yes, Get out that, of here. That's on Netflix. I did not. I didn't know that, but uh, we were just actually what? talking about it. We yeah. were just talking about that fight. No, it's on Netflix. Yeah. They're getting WWE next year. What are we talking about? Like, what are we? <laughs> what are we talking about? I think yeah. Netflix is the Bitcoin of streaming. And, you know, there's all the other ones that were the also ran. Oh. You got Paramount Plus, MGM. But at the end of the day, there's one that's going to dominate the market. And I think that the box office companies, the studios have hurt themselves trying to compete in a space that was always antithetical to their business model. And now Netflix is left with exactly what they wanted. They've reshuffled the deck. Who would have thought that a company that used to like send you CDDs in the mail DVDs. would have one of the like most bankable, and that's what he is. He's one of the most bankable um, directors in Hollywood. His films make money. Bruh, man, it's no, it's it's crazy. Like that event last night was different. It was different, right? Um, I don't know what the rollouts and what the stuff looks like for Stranger Things, and if they do like similar things like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, but. I mean, y'all saw it on the stream. You walk in, it's like Netflix shit everywhere and Rebel. I was like, yo, what is, yo, like, what's going on? Big Netflix signs over the bar, over uh, the stage. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. It's a club atmosphere. Like, it's like a rave in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you got lasers and smoke machines, yep. right? Jaimon Hansu and Sophia Butella coming out on stage and Ray Fisher and it's every I'm like, yo, this is nah, that was definitely different. And um for me to be able to be there and to ask Zach that question, uh man, it was it was amazing. And I'll just say this, like, and look, we we gonna keep pushing the envelope, man. We got something else big coming for y'all next week, too. Like we, it's just we're going to keep trying to push the envelope and keep trying to um, get these answers for the fans um, because that is what this thing has always been about, like really cutting through uh, all of this uh, gatekeeping and things that, you know, hold the regular fans out of these conversations, right? Like um, I feel like we represent the regular fans because we are. Right. Like the only difference is I just made a YouTube channel and I talk. Yep. Right. Like that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't take money from anybody like there. I have not been paid one dime outside of, you know, from all the great people's super chats and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. it. And so, uh, yeah, we really just have been trying to push this thing forward. And um, I think that you know, with what I asked him and with him saying, yo, that they were cutting it, they were cutting their teeth on Rebel Moon, like, that's a very specific thing to say. Like, that means you're getting ready for something bigger, you, yeah. you, you know? And um, he spoke about Rebel Moon, like, period. Like, yo, we were cutting our teeth on Rebel Moon, and if Netflix gets the rights, we ready to go. That sounds like, yo, we we worked out all the kinks, Mm -hmm. And now we feel like we can do this shit, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the other news that came out with uh, the DCU that maybe they're gonna have Ultraman. You saw that as a villain for, and Superman people Lex are talking about, man, you're gonna have Lex Luthor um, having a clone, a genetically altered version of Superman that's gonna be the antagonist. Like, man, that sounds a lot like Batman versus Superman. <laughs> so, Yo. That's not the first time people have been saying, like, man, this sounds a lot like Batman versus Superman. It sounds a lot like that and the what was supposed to be the Man of Tomorrow film, right? Um and yo, it's just man, look, 
I'm going to say this. The the ghost of Zack Snyder still looms large over DC as a whole, you know, and look, I'll, I'll say this in the immortal words of um, a lot of y'all can understand this because I know it's a lot of MCU fans out there, right? You can dread it. You can run from it, right? But destiny still arrives. <laughs> like, you can't get away from it. You yeah. can't get away from this man's influence. Nolan said it best. Like, he said, yo, I have... No, no, wait. What did he say specifically? He, he was like, yo, like, pretty much every single superhero sci-fi movie has been influenced by Man of Steel since that film has came out. And... That's one of the goats talking. So I'm going to take Nolan's word over, you know, random fan on X Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> right. Here's a question for you. Um, Avengers Ryan said, I would like for him to know if he would like for Zach to introduce Superman or Supergirl to Brainiac, Metallo, and Silver Banshee in the Made of Tomorrow live action. Man, um, look, I, I think that Zach clearly wanted to do metallo in batman versus superman right like if i'm not mistaken i think um the scoot mcnary character was going to be metallo at first okay right yeah. and then that changed um so he was definitely sowing seeds there uh i want jack to do whoever he wants man but i can't lie you know, Brainiac has been something that I've been wanting to see live action for like a long time. And if they can throw Silver Banshee in there or but even Livewire, that would be crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always thought Livewire was dope, too. So, um, yo, you know, look, they can do whoever. Whoever Zach wants, that's who I want. You're, you're yeah. down for whatever. <laughs> I think it's hilarious because the... Uh, the speculation for why Gunn had changed the name from Superman Legacy to Superman was so that there would be anytime anybody mentioned Superman, it would help his film trend because they've had problems generating interest. Yeah, and I, think, I think we're seeing definitive, you know, evidence, if not proof that the DC fandom that's still plugged in, that still has that kind of open mind of, hey, we want everybody to get what they want. Those people are intrinsically invested in there being a continuation of the Snyderverse. But, <laughs> right. but the other day, you know, Superman was trending because there's that you know picture of David Corn sweats dog in the chair. And that's kind of what they they market to of like, oh, you know, look, there's a dog in a chair. How does that make you feel? And immediately Man of Steel and Zack Snyder popped up <laughs> on the trending. And I think it's backfiring, dude. Hey, look, I've been saying this from the jump. Right. Um, I think that it's still very, very evident that, you know, them deciding to not give us that last ride with these characters has backfired tremendously. And um, I think that when you see see, but I, I, I think that they also were banking on um, this whole law in D.C. would be benefit them right because it would give them like hey guys um it's been a while so now you know you guys are starved for dc so maybe you'll want to come see my superman movie um but i don't think that that's going to work at all i think that um james gunn is not necessarily a a high profile director in the general audiences most people that um I would say that I've asked if they know Zack Snyder, they'll say they know Zack way before they know James Gunn. And that's just true of like popularity level. So I think that when you have a character like Superman that, you know, outside of Zack Snyder has kind of struggled to maintain um, pop culture relevancy in like film, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think that, you know, them making this choice to not kind of give us this last ride, especially after announcing that Henry Cavill was going to be back. I mean, they, 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 there's been blunder after blunder uh, that that you can point to, and I think it's really kind of playing out in their lack of ability to create hype. Absolutely. I'm actually about to have to run. Peter's about to swap with me. 
Um, I have a soccer game I got to go play in, dude. It was so great to hear. We got to have you uh, back on next week as well, man. Hey, I'm going to come through for fan rant, and I'll come through with a great rant. And good luck on the soccer game. I hope you all win. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully we don't win a lot. You know? I'll say no. Hopefully he doesn't hurt himself. He usually injures himself at soccer games. I usually get injured. It's a difference. <laughs> you got to stretch, man. Stretch. <laughs> yep, I will. Um, y'all keep talking. I'm going to go. Good luck. Yo, but yeah, um, I, I really do think that, um, yeah, it's been, it's been quite the experience since the Henry Cavill is out thing, right? Uh, that yeah. really, yeah. Like the Henry Cavill thing caused a huge stir, and then the Wonder Woman thing is still causing issues. Because did you you saw the article about uh, Patty Jenkins and uh, the original Wonder Woman saying that? There's a story to be told, and that she doesn't understand why DC is not making another Wonder Woman. Right? I mean, hey, but you know, James Gunn got to have his DCU, right? So we can't have both, right? There's no way that we could have gotten closure, right? And a Wonder, right? Look, the last ride could have literally been Man of Steel to a Ben Affleck Batman movie, which you don't even have to pour like hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars into i'm yeah. sure no. right so yeah. um yeah it could have just been man is still two bat fleck wonder woman three justice league finale and there you go right and i think we all would have been okay with that and it probably could have happened and you could have been wrapping up Right around the time that we're going into James Gunn's Superman movie, so uh, yeah, it's just it's just a very, very um, unfortunate choice that they made, and I think that they're still suffering ramifications. No, one hundred percent, and I think that's also going to negatively affect James Gunn's whole universe, especially because he's already talking about doing another like uh, Justice League with the Authority, and I'm like, why are we getting another? Like, <laughs> why would you be focusing on the Authority? Right. Yeah. To me, it always feels like the rush to get the authority out there, to get your own Justice League out there as well. It's like a kid who's freaking out, like no one's paying attention to me. But he's how already done I, his own Justice exactly. League. Like, like you don't I need to go to the authority. Attention? It's like I need to get more and more. It's like, dude, just relax. Like people are gonna watch your stuff if you just like be faithful and be like honest with but your material. He's unable to be faithful. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's uh, the main issue. Like right? he loves picking characters that are very unknown and doing whatever he wants with them. Yeah, and he's gonna find it's a, a lot tougher to do that with these icons over uh, at DC, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, if you really, if you really sit back and think about it, James Gunn has never had this much pressure ever in his career, right? And I think that certain people they deal with pressure in different ways, right? And I think his refusal to let things finish. You know, mm -hmm. I, look, I'm going to just be honest, because this fan ran Thursday. I think it was an ego thing, like 100%. And <laughs> this entire thing has been ego-driven this entire time. Like, why else would it not have been? Um, the whole Netflix angle for the Snyderverse is literally a win-win-win for all three parties. But yeah. yet, you got people saying, oh, no, but it's going to be competing. And why? Like, why is it competition? And if it's su and if it's such competition, why are we here in the first place? Why didn't we just get the conclusion, right? So yes. it really makes no sense, no matter what way that you look at it. And um, yeah, I just think that you know we're really dealing. With, uh, we're in the end of days when it feels, you know, wait, the end of days for DC. It feels because I don't know if this Superman movie comes out and bombs. What's gonna happen? <laughs> exactly. But and right. no, and to your point about competition, if Zack Snyder continuing on his competition, then how do people not understand that maybe James Gunn doesn't want Matt Reeves Batman in part two to continue right. because that would be competition? Yo, I know somebody that loves competition, Zack Snyder. Zack said <laughs> it when he was talking about the Green Lantern, mm -hmm. right? When they said, oh, you know, they told me that I couldn't use Green Lantern because they were going to use him. And he was like, yo, how about, you know, you cast your guy, yeah. I cast my guy, 
and we let the fans decide who Green Lantern is. You know what I'm saying, right? Like, yeah. like, why yeah. not just do that? You know? Uh, but I really think that the shadow of Henry Cavill, you know, it, I mean, look, and I I kind of feel bad for David, um, for David Corn Sweat, right? Because, you know, he is an actor and I'm, I'm never against anybody not putting food on their family's table in any kind of way that um, is it illegal? You know what I'm saying? But like, um, yeah, at the same time, this is, I mean, I don't envy this position at all. Like, no. that's crazy. Right? And they over here trying to hide the budget numbers. It's crazy how they're over here trying to act like this movie's going to be cheap. But then you hear that they're shooting it with IMAX cameras the entire film like yeah. why would you have a cheap looking film that you're going to shoot in in imax i totally believe that this budget is going to be like 300 something million when it's all said and done yeah including the marketing i could easily see that i could easily see it 100 yeah. percent. which is insane like we literally just saw dune and it was nowhere near an insane budget, and it, but it's a phenomenal film. Like, you don't have to spend an astronomical amount of money to make a good movie. No, I mean, the yeah. idea of them shooting in IMAX is like, you're going to shoot uh, or you're going to remake like, Sharknado in IMAX. People be like, that seems like a wasted opportunity for IMAX because, you know, it brings like the best in films. Like, no, we're going to make a B list film with it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, that is, that is pretty crazy. I think that, um, you know, the Superman film, look, Warner Brothers, they made their bed, you know what I'm saying? and they got a lady, uh, yeah. right? They, yeah, they made their choices. They got uh, real jealous of the MCU and somehow thought James Gunn was going to give it to him. <laughs> Krypton had his chance. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> For sure. Oh, my gosh. No, whenever I see them just talking about more and more of these projects coming out, and like I don't know how you feel about this, but like I get more anxiety about it. So I'm like, it feels like they're just kind of trying to prop up everything they're saying. Like, oh, we're about to release all these new things to help Warner Bros. look like they have more going on than they actually do. I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, there's no guarantee that all these things are going to get made, right? Like, this company literally about to get sold. It seems as if they're trying to portray this robust library of stuff that they have coming down the pipeline when, in reality, they have no idea what's going to yeah. get made. Um you know, I'm once again maybe in the minority, but I think Joker 2 is gonna smack. I think that that film is gonna make a lot of money. I don't know if it's gonna make a billion, but I think it has the potential to be pretty big. Um, I'm very intrigued by this whole musical aspect. Yeah. I think nobody saw it coming. Um, and if you really watch the first film, there was a lot of like musical aspects of that film, right? With the whole dancing in the bathroom scene and you know i mean he had a couple dance scenes in that film so yeah. uh you had the step scene which was almost like right out of a musical right and they had the michael yeah. jordan put intro playing in the background right <laughs> uh and it was super dope right but um i just think that uh they're gonna have to bank on things that are making or they should be in theory, right? You would think. I mean, oh, yeah. You know, Constantine 2 seems to be like that would be a thing. That would probably be a pretty good thing to bank on, seeing as how Keanu Reeves is still, you, you know, um, make it. Uh, still uh, super popular and everybody seems willing to come back. So, yeah. uh, and the fans want it, right? We want all this stuff. Yeah. You know, and I think if they give us more of what we want, and less of what they're trying to feed us, um, I think everybody would be much better off. Yeah. I'm still on the fence for Joker 2, though, because the musical I aspect, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about how much of it's going to be the musical aspect. Um, and then a lot of people were actually really upset when they found out that it's going to be like a jukebox musical, which means she's going to be singing a lot of the songs that I've already created, so it's not any of her new stuff, like her making her own songs. The funniest yeah. criticism I've heard recently was people were worried that Lady Gaga's accent won't be proper for Harley Quinn. No, they weren't worried. They said they were upset because she oh, doesn't well, have yeah. the accent. It's like, 
of like, Harlequin. Okay, like yeah. what accent is that? And they don't, really don't have an answer for that. I, well, have we heard her voice in the movie? I think it was some people who've seen the movie ahead of time. And oh, so, all right, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Man, look, um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I trust Todd Phillips, though. You know, this is totally me trusting in Todd Phillips. And look, Joaquin has never done a sequel. Yeah. And I know. Yeah. He, he said that he was never going to do it unless it was dope. Right. So it's Joaquin, it's Todd Phillips. It's the first movie was amazing. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but why is there hey. still no trailer? Like, yeah, I want to see dude. a trailer. Give me, give me a trailer. It's been too damn long. Hey. Hey, we we gonna get one, and I think that they, that look, yo, they're doing just that. They're building up that anticipation, and now we're all screaming. Where's well, the trailer? Right? No, one hundred percent. They're slowly. They just leaked a fucking poster, and I'm like, what am I supposed to grasp from that? Everything. It's like everything. It's just a thousand words. <laughs> right? Right? Oh, also, yo, no, no. Say, what's up to Leon? I just saw him join the chat. Hey, and shout out to Lieutenant Leon, man. Real talk. But, yo, I, I was just going to say, back to Joker 2, because, yo, look, I don't even trust in Todd Phillips. Like, just give my man the benefit of the doubt just one time. I'm going to watch it. I'm just saying I'm a little, I'm reserving my anticipation. I'm a little, I'm a little bit scared. Because uh, musicals can go one of two ways. No. <laughs> I know Mama Mia, or you get to some like weird off Broadway show. Yeah, it, it depends on how much is how much is musical. Yeah, y'all want to hear a funny story? Um, I walked into Sweeney Todd not knowing that it was a musical. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys imagine oh <laughs> my gosh. how like how taken aback I was that I was watching Johnny Depp in a musical? Yeah, I had no idea that it was a musical going into it, and I literally walked into the theater, and I was like, oh, my God, what the hell is it? And I didn't even know know how to judge it. I was like, is this good? Yeah. Is this? I was like, I don't, I was like, like what is going on? <laughs> my question is, whenever you're going to go see Sweeney Todd, what were you expecting? Were you expecting, like, a new, like, Edward Scissorhands kind of film or what? Dude, like, I don't think I – I think I might have seen – just a poster or something. Really? And I was like, ah, oh, it's, you know, it's Johnny Depp, you know, cause, cause I'm a huge Johnny Depp fan, especially back then. And I was like, oh man, yeah, I'm gonna go check this out. It looks creepy, right? Yeah, the legend of Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street, right? And I'm like, okay, okay, right? And yeah, walked in and 100% was like, what the hell am I watching? <laughs> I was like, yo. Like, what did I sign up for? But Crazy. Yeah, I'll go see it, and I'm not telling anyone not to go see it. I'm just saying. I think about Joker 1. I like Joker. I like Joker 1. But like, I'm, like it's good, but ah, I, no. I, that's the thing. my thing is, I feel like, no, it's a really good movie. My thing is, People try to argue, like, who's a better Joker? Is it Walking Phoenix or is it Heath Ledger? My it's thing un- is... It was unfair. Yeah, like, they're not the same. Yes. Like, like, Heath Ledger is a traditional Joker when it's, like, mass chaos, while you have actually Walking Phoenix who is, like, being diagnosed with mental illness, which is a new interpretation of how yeah. we're seeing Joker. Yeah. Which and I got a whole movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, so I completely understand. They're completely different versions of each other. But... I get caught up in the argument that I have with people over yeah. that. So. No, it's man, hard to look, separate, bro. Look, I never subscribed to that because I was like, I think if he would have had an entire movie, we might have been saying, yo, like he was hands down clearly of what, you know, that was just weird. Um, Joaquin got a whole movie as Joker, which um, he did not. Right, no. he, he didn't get a whole movie focused on his character. So, uh, yeah, it's a it's an unfair comparison, and yeah, I I didn't worry nothing about that. I, I was like, man, I'm going to go, co- I'm going to go see Joaquin Phoenix. And when I walked out of the theater, that was one of the most like powerful emotional experiences I've ever had leaving a theater ever. And. The Robert De Niro scene at the end, like I was like, oh, yeah. my, yo, like, 
No, but yeah. Yeah, that whole scene with him, he's like, this. I was like, what is happening? I was not expecting him to just go full, like, berserk. And he, I was like, oh my God, this is that type of film. I misunderstood this. <laughs> yeah. You know, what about that up for? Dude, like, right. I like, I like the darkness of it. And that's like, especially when you're telling villain stories, I always feel like you should have a very, like, dark side of it. Like, you need to show, like, an actual villain being a villain. You can't try to sugarcoat it and be like, well, he came from a bad upbringing and it's, it's all justified. It's like, no, some people are yeah. just crazy and they do crazy shit. Yeah. So, um, so oh, I'm optimistic mm-hmm. for two, but from the pictures, they're obviously leaning into the psycho, like them being crazy. Mm-hmm. And people, I feel like, are focusing way too much on Lady Gaga. Um, so. She's a good actress. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But she's also a singer first. Like, she's. We'll, we'll see how far she can take this. I, she right. hasn't been in that many fucking roles. Like, I mean, she right. was actually pretty good at A Star is Born, though. Yes, but that's the thing. We'll see. We, we actually, shall see. Okay. We do actually. Have I'm not saying comments. my hopes are super high, so I can. I, okay. I don't want to be disappointed. Like, okay. My I'm expectations sorry. are sky high, and <laughs> no, 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 they are. No, honestly, like when I walked out of Joker one, I genuinely was like, "Yo, man, I have to be nicer to people." Like it was I'm a like, you're like, we're more about murder than anything. <laughs> I have to be nicer to people. No, no, no. Yeah, because the entire movie, you're you're just watching him and you want somebody to just, you know, yeah. be nice to him. Yeah. Right? And then when you see how he reacts to the people that were nice to him, like the guy in the uh hallway scene, I'm not gonna spoil that, right? But yeah, um, yo, it was just, uh, it was powerful. I was like, man, I have to be nicer to people. Like, yeah, it was just crazy. So, Sin Havoc said there's 12 to 15 songs being performed in Joker 2. Musical. So, yeah. Musical. Yeah. We'll see how they, like, weave that into the storytelling. Yep. So. It has to be good, because my protection is sky high. That's the thing. I'm already seeing that we're gonna have to have a whole live stream after we go both go see this movie yeah. to have a whole fucking conversation about it. I'm down. Yeah. We're gonna have to. But let me tell you, okay, Parker Parker, I promise I saw your comment, bro. Yeah. So Parker wanted me to tell you, okay, so what did you think about the leaked Minecraft tree? Did you see the tree? No, so, I didn't. Um, so they're making obviously the live action Minecraft movie. And we've been going back and forth about whether or not it's like how live action is gonna be, because how do you make Minecraft live action? So there's been a tree. Yeah. Um, actually pull it up and you pull up on this side. Please. Yeah. Hold on a second. I can pull it up for you. Let me just. Does it look video gamey? It it looks like blocky. It looks real, but blocky. <laughs> okay. Pretty much. Um, yeah. There you go. See, so basically, this is the tree. I think mm. it's actually cool what they're doing, where they're actually making it out okay. of real stuff, like actual materials, and yeah. they're making it look like a video game. Okay. So it looks I, like there's going to be a crossover. I can dig it. Yeah, I can dig it. And, you know, look, a lot of times with these set photos, it's really lacking that movie magic, right? And all the <laughs> yeah, special and bring, effects yeah. and all the touch up yeah. stuff. So I'm sure that it's going to look dope. Um, yeah, I actually really like that. Okay. You know, because uh, Jack Black's gonna be like himself, right? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the freaking thing. Uh, <laughs> it was so funny. She's like, we're uh, still novices at StreamYard, so we're like, oh, what do you do this? What's this one do? We're trying to figure it out. Going back from streams. Okay. Um, yes, Jack Black's in it. So is um is it Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa. Yeah, they actually have a pretty good cast in there too. Uh, we've just been curious about how they're gonna actually have the people show up in the film and how the world's gonna be built around them. Yeah. Because it says live action, but like how how live action are we gonna get? It's Minecraft. Right. There gotta be some blocks in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we actually have a lot of comments we want your opinion on. We can chime in as well with it. So we got you can take your wrong one. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> so yeah, Daniel Martin, a lot of Frank Sinatra and the Joker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Hey, and uh, and shout out to everybody on X slash Twitter that caught that uh, video of me singing Frank Sinatra <laughs> before uh, going to that thing. You know, hey, that was super dope. Did we you, really planned up the NYC thing. 
<laughs> Your best New York, New York. Hey, New York, New York. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor Martin said the original songs made Barbie more tolerable. So that's what I'm saying. Maybe. I, it, it's all right. It's it's not my cup of tea, but let's hit Leon right there. Where? Right there. Oh, Leon. right there. Okay, yeah. sorry. So Leon said, uh, "Joker Two is probably going to be good." And I hate musicals. Todd is a part of that crew of modern era of altruists. Chris Nolan, Zack Snyder, Diz Villeneuve, and Todd Phillips—they're all homies in real life. Mm -hmm. Yep. True. True statement. We gonna That's see. I don't really like musicals, so I'm like, they, I they, they're gonna have to sell me on it, bruh. Yo, I've seen Sweeney Todd, and what's another one? Another famous La La one, huh? La La Land. See, I no, I haven't even seen La La Land. I thought that was amazing. See, and I don't really like La La Land. See, and I never saw it. Right, so but mm -hmm. I, I'm not really into musicals either. But uh, I <laughs> think <laughs> this is this is so outside of the box. It just might work. Think about it. Parker Nobody said, was expecting it. Yeah, Parker said Wonka was, is a musical, and I didn't see Wonka yet. Well, Wonka? Oh my God, Wonka! Oh, that, that is so true. <laughs> and it's one of the greatest movies of all time. Oh, oh, wait, no, I thought they were talking about the uh, original. Mean, yeah. well, I guess both kind of are. Though. I, they both I, actually I have a it, lot of singing. Technically, I guess they both are. But yeah. I think he's talking about the most recent one with Timothy Chalamet. I didn't. Man, look, I'm sorry. Certain things I just can't get over. Wonka to me is Gene Wilder, and I'm gonna just leave it there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, no, I'm sorry. no, that no, that's very true. I didn't even watch the Johnny Depp one. I don't think so. I'm it's very, very creepy. That it's, one was too weird. Creepy. But I'm just saying, you know, um, man, just if you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it. Come on, like <laughs> you don't get no better than that. We'll, we'll see. Dan Martin said the first Joker made a billion dollars without a China release, which is insane and tells you how much audiences resonate with it. So I'm saying with that fact alone, I think regardless of it being a musical, it's going to make a lot of money. I just yeah. don't think we should have spent $200 million to make it though. I don't think that $200 million was by choice though. I don't think Todd Bill, after making the first one, realized like, I don't need this extra money. Like it's not going to really help me. I made an amazing film without it. And it might a lot of that might have been licensing a lot of this music too. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. That's, that's actually I didn't think true. about that yeah. actually. That's you point. know, so they better because if they got a lot of iconic case, songs. Yeah, right. Like if he started getting up there and singing "New York, New York," or like right, like you know, uh, uh, da, da, da. <laughs> so if that's the case, they better like sell me on this fucking singing to make it worth it for all the money they had to spend. I'm also curious, or I'm wondering as well, is like all the musical that's gonna be happening. I wonder if it's gonna be all in their heads because they're so insane. It's actually not them not singing. It's all because they're like clearly crazy people and they're envisioning yeah. the world as this musical fantasy. But it's like, turns out no, we're just insane people walking through the uh, street screaming songs. Think about this, right? When when he's dancing in the first one, he's hearing this music. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like. The musical may just be like him being so insane. He hears the songs. Yo, I I think they were low key sowing the seeds for yeah. this in the first one. I think yeah. they was low key sowing the seeds. Like, hey, this guy he, he, he's hearing this music that isn't there that you're clearly seeing right with the whole bathroom scene, which was another scene that was so eerie and chilling and beautiful all at the same time. It, it was crazy. Yeah. Look, I mean, I don't know. Yo, Joker is sending up. I'm sorry. I, I, I'll just that I'm dying on that hill, hundred percent. So, with that said, someone would like to give you a different viewpoint. Four thousand said Joker one is a fine movie. It's just a poor taxi driver movie. Not much happens, and you know who's going to kill De Niro from the trailers, but nothing beyond that. They showed him shooting him in the trailer. No, but they did. I it, mean, it was insinuated. It was insinuated. I remember in the trailers, they showed that interview with Robert De Niro and Joaquin Phoenix, and it was like obviously very heated. You can tell it's about to be like something violence about to happen from the trailer. Yeah. I don't know. When when he shot him, I was shocked. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm sorry. I was, because I was locked in that entire film. When that happened, I was, I was not expecting that to happen. 
I just I just wasn't. Or maybe it was the way it happened, or I don't know. But I love that film. And I get that it is similar to Taxi Driver, but there's definitely a few scenes in there that are very, very powerful. Like the scene with him dancing yeah. down the stairs. That is a dope and and there's nothing like that in Taxi Driver. So I don't want to hear. I think the biggest comparison to will draw is like the fact that like Robert De Niro is kind of like going down the rabbit hole of insanity and taxi driver is very similar to walking Phoenix becoming so unhinged throughout the film. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, it's New York and the eighties and, you know, mm. I get it, you know, but at the same time, there were several scenes in there that wasn't that, you know, it was very, very different from taxi driver. I was like, Leon said, literally no one in any viewing of my theaters when watching Joker, <laughs> no one saw that coming. Everyone saw it. I think it was like the whole thing about it as well was it was such a random act of violence because it came out like you could tell he was obviously agitated in the like interview, but like whenever he finally snapped, you're like, whoa, 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 he did it on TV. Like he's a murderer now. And you're like, oh, like look, it seemed like he was gonna like try to unalive himself or whatever, like on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, I thought that. Like, they kept kind of playing that up. And I was like, man, like, what's he going to do? And so when he does that, I was like, what? Like, yo, yo, yeah, it was, I was one of those people that gasped to Leon, so 100%. I think Dave Hart said a lot of non-comic book people went to see the Joker that probably never heard of The Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> right? Why do Jokers? That's so weird. That's so funny. Well, that was the thing because from the trailers, a lot of people thought it was just focused on mental illness. Yeah. And so during that time period, a lot of people wanted to see something that would portray that on screen, and probably didn't know anything about the Joker. I think the biggest moment in that film that was why, like, what the fuck is happening? Moment was whenever his whole relationship with the woman was all in his head. I was like, I knew it was coming, but I was like, bro, what is happening? Like, he is so insane. Like, she is freaked out by this man yeah. at her door. Yeah. Man, look, and I didn't, I kind of didn't see that coming. Man, look, I was, because I did think it was a little weird, right? But I was like, man, I didn't know that that none of that happened, right? And when they kind of backed it up, I, I was like, oh, yeah. my God. That's how right? I was like, what is happening? Yo, because the way they did it, too, because she walks in and she's like, yo, like, why are you in here? You know what I'm saying? And, and you can see it on her face. And they spent the entire film building up this, like, actually kind of like touchy relationship. Like, oh, man, like, he found someone to connect to finally in this world. You're like, wait, that's all fake? And you're like, oh, God. Send him up. No, I'll give you that. It's called story building. It's either you have or you don't. I'll say I will say the person who probably guessed that was Andy. Andy's very good at guessing where fucking movies will go. Yo, what's funny is I am too, but with that one, I was just so locked in from moment to moment that I wasn't even thinking about like where it was going because I was just like, man, I, like I, I was just so caught up in um what he was experiencing, and yo, that's just that's just I'm gonna watch that tonight. You know, I got it on 4K right there. I'm gonna put it on. <laughs> I don't watch that tonight. Oh, wish. okay. So Saturday, you doing the cartoon, cartoon serial? Absolutely, absolutely. We are watching Castlevania this weekend, the Netflix mm -hmm. series. We're gonna be starting that off. And, uh, yo, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this was a recommendation from the homie L Necron. So every time that, uh, he's recommended something, it's been super dope. So, uh, we're gonna make sure to lock in with that on Saturday. And, uh, also tomorrow, uh, we have my 1000 subscribers celebration stream. Congratulations, so everybody can dude. pull up. Uh, we are very excited to have that. And, um, yeah, it was just funny because I actually put that stream up before I put the Rebel Moon party thing up, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna throw this out there as bait." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that you know, but uh, nah, it was, it was super dope. So we got that. This is the, this is the next two days, and um, we'll be locking in for sure. Pretty so soon. Yeah, everyone that's here, please go follow and like subscribe to Sky. He does great content every week. He's so in touch. He's basically the foot soldier for this entire movement that he is pushing so hard, especially with his team behind him. For Zack Snyder, story so, of the There it is. Thank you. 
And guys, like if you want to see these things, go support him because he is like he is making it happen. He is making moves in Hollywood, and you are seeing that what's happening. Especially if you go watch his live stream from last night, you will know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. We locked in with Ed Scrine, Milius, Ray Fisher, Zach, Debbie. You know what I'm saying? Wes. Uh, you know, I've also interviewed um, DJ. Because I went to the Rebel Moon Part One premiere, right? Man, it's just yeah. We've been uh, yo, and we gonna be doing. Hold up. I don't know if I can announce that yet, but yeah, <laughs> we, we got some dope coming There's up. Stuff coming up, right? Stuff yeah, up. and yo, we just gonna keep locking in, and um, we've been we're just trying to keep the or our ears to the ground and be the pulse for the Zack Snyder fan base. And uh, I think that we've been doing a great job of doing that. So we shout Thank out you. to y'all too. Y'all been dope collaborators and we love having you on the platform last night. Y'all killed it as well. Sorry, we couldn't have you there. It would have been better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We did get an invite for some reason. Well, no, <laughs> I, I went out with my friends. I apologize. I didn't know that was happening. And they told me afterwards. it was super late. No, yeah. it it was super late oh, notice because because I didn't want to spoil the surprise, no, but yeah. uh yeah, so I kind of just had to let y'all know late. So we were just glad that you know if some of you guys could come through. Mm -hmm. Appreciate. It. Well, we won't be able to be with you tomorrow because we have to go to a wedding. But mm -hmm. Saturday, hit us up. We might be able to hop on for cartoon cereal. Hey, for sure, for sure. And y'all have fun at the wedding. You know that's always good. Energy and vibes, and uh, best of wishes on that end as well. Thank you, and hopefully you can hit us up and come to the next Thursday night fan rants. Mm -hmm. Hey, Every I might be pulling Thursday, up. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, hey, I'm loving being able to rant as a fan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I can't be honest about some of this stuff on my channel because yeah. we try to keep our DCU talk to like a minimum, <laughs> right? But yeah. I get to come over here and just kind of let loose about what I really no. think. <laughs> right? So, for sure. Awesome. All right. Well, you guys want to wrap it up? We've hit our three-hour mark. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see everyone next mm -hmm. time. Make sure you guys subscribe, like the video, hit up Skywalker the Jedi, and then come to Cartoons and Serial on Saturday. And hit up his uh, viewing tomorrow for a 1,000 followers. Y'all are amazing, and we'll catch you guys next time. Y'all all be easy out there. Night, everybody.